Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the December 15th, 2000, and, um, oh, 15. It sounded weird as I was saying it. Uh, so let's start that again. Thank you for joining us this evening, December 15th, 2015, for the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee meeting. If everyone would rise to pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As you know, tonight's workshop is with SAU 90, and we have Nathan Lunny and Superintendent Murphy joining us tonight, as well as a pretty good delegation in the back of um, our school board and our principals. I have almost no voice whatsoever, so I'm going to start on this side with Nick, and when we get to Kathleen and Nathan, if you would introduce everyone in the back room, because as you know, we don't have our secretary live anymore, and um, she can only pick up on, on the um, audio feed from the um, meeting. So Nathan, introduce yourself. Nick. Yeah. Nick Bridal. Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Scott Blair. Mike Pierce. Sonny Kravitz. Ryan Lapham. Eileen Latimer. Mike Bluff. Jerry Zanoy. Sandra Nickerson. Stephen LeBranch. Kevin Murphy. Nathan Lunny. And I'll turn it over to you, Kathy. So I'm pleased everyone. that I could introduce our team. You know, no budget can be developed and no work can be done unless it's a team approach. So it's it's uh, we have our team with us tonight. So if I take a minute just Absolutely. to introduce, introduce them. I'm going to step back so you can see them. But um, led by our chair, Jeanine Bridal Russell, um, and our vice chair for the school board happens to be sitting at the table, Mr. Zanoy, so he's, he's a member of our board. And also with us tonight, um, Pepper Ring and Frank DeLuca and Andrew Shepard uh, for the, from the board. And um, our building administrators, you know, that this work that we do every day is really dependent on our leadership and the leadership that we have in our building. So, you know, that they're just a great group to work with. And starting back there, David O'Connor, and uh, Lois Costa, um, little, little, little point of information, Mrs. Costa uh, uh, received her doctorate in education on um, Saturday morning, and uh, wow. we had a chance to do it. She did an uh, awesome job and uh, made us all very, very proud. Um, also joining us tonight, Tim Lannon, principal at Center School, and Sarah Stetson, our director for special services. So. I appreciate them all being there. Of course, we always have Jay Ring with us, too, so Jay <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. And the excellence continues. Well, thanks for giving us a chance to uh, provide us with an opportunity to be here and, and to present uh, this, the school board's budget to you. You know, as we customarily do, we try to give you a quick, brief overview. You've all had a chance to see. I feel like I'm sinking in this chair. <laughs> Either Nathan's getting bigger or I'm shriveling. So what do you here. think that is, One Nathan? Man can no, they're old. They brought some of them. They are. They sink. just continue. So if I, you see me down here on the floor, you'll know. What happens to me in the corner over there? I mean, every night we have a board meeting, I just slowly sink away. <laughs> Sometimes so we, I appear not to be here. You gave her that chair. <laughs> so as we normally do, I do a brief overview, and then uh, Nathan will get into the details because, you know, the story is always in the details. Um, but before I do that, just a quick note about process. We often get this question, how do you develop your budget? And really, our budget is a grassroots effort. The principals behind me and the directors, including you know Mary Borg and Keith and Sarah, they and Greg Lamparis, our tech director, they all um, work with their team to, to gather input from them about what their needs are based on this student load and um, other factors, uh, enrollment and obviously new programs that are around, uh, that are coming to us. And so the, the principals and directors work with the staff. That, that budget is prepared by, then, by them. And then it comes to Nathan and I. And we sit down with all the departments um, and um, in, sit by themselves and then together as a group. And uh, we walk our way through the budget as we prepare a document for our school board. 
then moves to the school board. And I, you know, Nathan and I always feel good about it because our school board takes the, these deliberations very seriously. And um, they, uh, Jerry will attest to it, the board behind me will attest, they go line by line. So they have addressed every single line in this budget, which is a really great process, and it's so helpful for Nathan and I. Uh, one other thing to keep in mind as we go through this tonight, we continue to use the philosophy of a zero-based budget. What does that mean? That means that we ask all of our departments, all of our directors, Nathan and I, to say, what is it that we need for the, for the programs and for the students? What kinds of materials and resources do we need? We also look at things at what kind of programs, for instance, if we're working on a new math program, we want to make sure that that's reflected in the budget. We also do enrollment, and you'll see that. You know, our, as our enrollment has gone up and down a little bit, you'll see that we've made the reductions. And we're not afraid to do that, because we want to prepare a budget that's zero-based and based on the needs of our, of our school district. So just keep that in mind. If I could, and on this, I think it's on your second page. Um, just quickly review the goals. And what, we, what the board is adamant about and what we try to follow through on is that we develop a, a budget based on what the board has determined that they want to do in the district for that year and for the following year. So just a quick overview, the first one, curriculum, uh, instruction and assessment, that's all about the materials, uh, that we need for the students. And this year and next year, we've been focusing on science and STEM. Science, technology, engineering, and math has been a big um, investment in our district, continues to be at all levels, by the way. This isn't just for the middle school. This, this is starting down with our, with our young kids in kindergarten and first grade, because you know that's where it has to start. So that's really the effort in, in uh, curriculum. And around the corner will be social studies finally. So we'll be looking at social studies next summer. Um, human capital, you know, that's where we look at the enrollment. What's our enrollment? What are our class sizes? What do we predict the enrollment's going to look like over time? And so using though that kind of feedback, we try to develop and anticipate what we need. Now, we have a few surprises. This year, we had one. When Nathan and I started, there were about 10 to 12 kids in our English language learners class. Those are youngsters who are learning the English language, who are new to our country. Well, we are now up to 35. So with that increase, it, it, it affects all three buildings. You'll see it in the budget when Nathan goes over the individual numbers. But that's an example where I had to go to the board and ask the board for additional help, because now we have students in all three buildings whereas prior years we only had a smaller number and they were only in two buildings. Uh, so, so we asked the board for that. They gave it to us this year, but, we put, but it was never budgeted in last year's budget, so we put it in this year's budget, so you'll see that reflected. So those are the kinds of things we do around human capital. Um, pro, and, and then they continually do communication, um, working on our communication, effective communication with the community. You know that we've had a lot of forums this year. We had one on drug and alcohol. We had one on bullying. And of course, we've of late had at least three forums on the facilities, and that being Hampton Academy. And I would say to you, um, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but the project, uh, the board last night uh, voted five to zero to move forward with a renovation um, addition to Hampton Academy, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So that's kind of how we base our budget and how we move forward with it. So with that, and I'm trying to be quick because your time is valuable, um, I'm going to turn it over to Nate, who will go through the proposed budget and provide you with the details, and we'd be happy to answer any questions at the end. So. I've said it probably every year because it's what's in my mind. Dad's, Dad always said, tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, then tell them what you told them. So if there's redundancy, forgive me. First, I'm on, I'm on page three of your packet. Uh, the current operating budget today is $20,084,490 million, $20 on the ballot in la March of 15, last March. We also approved the long-term maintenance uh, article uh, that is annually on the ballot for 300000 an OPM, Owner's Project Manager, 
an architect uh, a ballot article for $86,250, and the child benefit article for Sacred Heart, the petition article, at $46,750. So we're, today we're operating under a 1516 operating of 20500000 roughly. If I go back to just the general operating, not, not including those extra articles, what we're talking about tonight is a default budget that represents an increase of $172,190. That's 0.86%, so less than 1%, but 0.86% of the, of the budget. So the, the default budget itself is right about 20 million and a quarter. Our proposed budget is less than that by $72,360, which is shaving 36, ten, uh, 36 one hundredths, 0 0.36 off. So the, the actual proposed budget is 20184320 which is 99830 bucks more than today's budget. It's a half of a percent larger than 1516. Okay, so I, I always, I, I work from, and this narrative dials back to the, the budget summary. The budget summary is page 13 in your handout, just so that you know, you can see it better. I'll keep through going through the slides so that there's some narrative for folks at home and for you, but really what I'm doing is picking out elements that are on that, budgets, that budget summary. And let me start by building the default budget. In the default budget, one of the biggest elements uh, is uh, a reduction of $140,621 in teacher salaries. This is actualizing for current year sa staff. So we've had some staff leave in the prior year. They've been replaced with less expensive people because they fall lower on the scale, either in terms of experience or education. And as a result, as I actualize for the people that are here today, there's a savings of $140,000. There are no salary increases included in the proposed budget for teachers because we're in a collective bargaining process. We have finished and ratified both sides, the union and the board. You'll see that as article number three on the ballot, uh, or on the warrant, excuse me. Uh, so there are no new salaries there uh, because of the collective bargaining. Um, so these are really not reductions. They're simply fixing the budget to match the people that are here today on salary. Our, we have two collective bargaining agreements, two unions. The other is in the, the paraprofessionals union, SESPA. Uh, we're budgeting here for the second of a four-year agreement that was voted in March. We are, uh, that, that agreement called for salary increases or wage increases of 1.75%. So that's reflected here. As well, members of the, of the paraprofessionals union who uh, have a step available to them on the scale advance that step. We're also adding two paraprofessional positions in special education. Identified student population directs that we need two more for, uh, for next year. We came in last year reducing by one, uh, and, and this is just further evidence of the zero-based budgeting model that the superintendent talked about a moment ago. We try to be very honest about what it is that we need, building from the ground up, going back and identifying all the IEPs for all of the identified students in the building. The total dollar impact here, $48,432. In the area of benefits and, pay and payroll-related taxes, there's a, a, an increase of $104,115 total. This is made up of a handful of pieces. First is health insurance. <coughs> Our health insurance rates are guaranteed maximum. You hear that with the town. Uh, we all work with a process that brings us a guaranteed maximum, then a revisited rate, an actual rate, you know, shortly before that fiscal period begins. The average guaranteed maximum increase was 10.5%. Our increase is actually a little, little worse than that, a little higher than that, because that average of 10.5 had the retirees packaged in with it, and their rates were far, far lower in increase, single digit, 2, 3, 4 percent. So our plans actually rose this year somewhere around 11.5 percent, by and large. Uh, we'll be talking more and more about health in the next cycle. We talked about it at the bargaining table with the teachers this last uh, <laughs> negotiating session because uh, April, uh, January 1 of 2018 is bringing us the excise tax that we've been calling Cadillac tax under the Affordable Care Act. 1617 uh, is what we're budgeting for right now, and it, it, it is an impacted. And so across the board, there haven't been any major changes, but there was language that we successfully negotiated into the teacher agreement to make sure that we hedged our bets, we prepared ourselves to do the research and make changes, and we protected the taxpayers against any excise tax dollars being paid by taxpayers. So 
Uh, all of that is to say you'll hear more about health in the next cycle. That's $141,000 worth of impact. We jumped in July to a new vendor for our life and long-term disability insurance coverages. Uh, we managed to save a net of $7,322 uh, in those packages. <coughs> Unemployment is down a little over $10,000. And because of some of the salary, the net salary decreases in the budget, the other benefits, including the FICA, the payroll-related taxes and, and contributions to New Hampshire retirement, are down a total of $19,403. Again, those net out to $104,000 of increase. The other big impact, and I said this uh, when we met in September, that we should be anticipating is that we are seeing an increase in our costs related to special education. There was little direction but up for us, though, because in the last couple of cycles, we have had essentially no out-of-district placements. All of our students have been in district, served by programs uh, run within our buildings with salaried staff that are employees and with contracted service uh, complementing them. And it's, it's really unthinkable in my experience to have as many, we have 120, some almost 130 identified students, and to have them all served within uh, isn't something I've seen in other districts where I've had experience. We're at about a 12, I think, percent uh, uh, identified population. 12 percent of the population is identified. That number is in the 15 or 16 percent range statewide. Uh, in most cases, you would see in those districts, because of some of the severe needs of their students, some number that were not of district placements. We've now had a couple of situations arise where we have placements and will continue to. As a result, you see that our tuition account is climbing by just under $100,000, and our contracted services increasing not only because of the needs of some of those students, but because of the needs of some of the students we continue to keep within the district. It's a real, it's a real testament to the work done by Dr. Stetson and, and her team of special educators and specialists. Our professional services will rise a little over 52000 and the net increase here is $152,436. Last in building the default, I came to you last year and I gave you all the news that I had about energy costs rising. And our contracts were up and, the, and the, the, everything that the market could tell me was that we were going to see some steep increases. But we went through the competitive process and managed to lock down some great rates. And so I raised, I think we asked for $78,600 worth of new dollars in the budget we have now. We'll give back um, uh, just under 68,000 of that in this budget because we were able to lock down with some great rates for electricity and natural gas, and we also were able to shave $3,000 off our water bill. Uh, that's a $67,660 decrease. In student transportation, there's three elements really at play. One is we are in a multi-year contract with first student for our home to school to home daily transportation. That contract uh, was a five-year deal. It calls for 3% increase each year. But the bigger portion of that, of that increase is related back to the special ed population I talked about and some of the placements. You have to transport students to and from the placement, and so there are some costs there. We also are, are adding a few more dollars to our McKinney-Vinto homeless transportation costs, $68,584 of new money there. A couple of cleanup items in the default. Property and liability is rising by 4100 our debt service is up 5,887, and uh, there were other minor changes worth a thousand, three thousand dollars of decrease. If we don't get to it, I, let me just take the moment to say right now, in your section 5,100 of your book, on the first page, you don't have to go to it now, but when you do, take a look. I tried to give you a little calculation there that reminds us year by year that because of the old model of building aid, state building aid for construction. Even though you see your debt service climbing, your net cost for debt service is falling because I show you each year a comparison of these expenditures against the revenue that still comes from the state as a part of what the state calls the tail that they're paying on old product projects. So your your total cost for debt service actually is going down each year, three or four thousand dollars a year. But here the appropriation side is up fifty eight hundred. Okay, tell them what you told them. Teacher, $140,000 reduction is just actualizing. The pair is up 48. Health and benefits and special ed costs we talked about, the energy, utilities, transportation, and other miscellaneous add up to 172,000 of new money. That's the 0.86% increase that makes the default budget of 20 million and a quarter. So now our proposed budget is lower than that. Let me tell you why. 
there are four elements that were described in a narrative at the beginning of your budget book, <clears throat> four elements of staffing. Uh, and so I've just offered a couple of bullet points here. But the first is that we proposed three reductions, or the reduction of three teaching positions. These are based on enrollment and program changes. There's one at each building. <coughs> the first is at center school. So at center school this year, we have in the budget seven, seven, and seven classrooms at each kindergarten, first, and second grade. But the board made the decision to leave two of those unfilled, so they're vacant because of the population, because of the numbers of students. So we're currently actually at six, seven, and six classrooms, respectively. Moving forward, that six goes to Marston. We'll talk about it in a minute. The six and seven move up. And we don't know yet for sure. So we're assuming, based on what we do know, a larger class coming in. So our configuration next year will be seven, six, and seven over the three grades, which is down one from the seven, seven, seven that's in the budget now. So there's a reduction of one. Go over to Marston, where we're sending a third grade of only six classrooms. Right now, Marston's a 777, both in actual and in budget. So we reduce one there. It'll be 677. We drop one. At the academy, we've taken world language off the core schedule. We'd be able to reduce from three full-time positions to two, still still satisfying the schedule and the, and the demand for uh, French and Spanish throughout the building but it's scheduled now more as a special than it is as a core element. And so we make that staffing change. That's a total of three positions that decrease $151,256. Now offsetting that, there's a proposal to add three part-time positions. The first is a 50% English as a second language teacher. The superintendent talked about that caseload and that, that demand a minute ago. A second is a 50% phys ed position at Hampton Academy seeking to continue to provide as many sections, as many opportunities for physical education over the course of a school year as possible for all three grades at the academy. And the third is a 50% special ed case manager at Hampton Academy, recognizing the identified population there, the caseloads, and the severity of some of the needs being addressed in that building. The total costs related to those, $91,434. Two more items. In our, in our work on developing the budget, the board and the superintendent contemplated the work being done by the curriculum co review committees. We've talked over the last couple of years, three, four years, and actually have in the front of the budget book a curriculum review schedule. It talks about the cycle of the different subject areas being reviewed by these curriculum committees. You've been through language arts and math, working on science and STEM right now, moving forward over the summer and into next year in social studies. The board proposed a $90,000 addition to the budget to add additional staffing resources at the direction of the recommendation of the superintendent and those committees when they come through their process, which they're in this year and will continue through next year, to try to address some of the needs that are identified in that effort. So I can't tell you if that is a couple of full-time teaching positions, if that's some part-time, some, some supports, other resources. It might be used in a number of ways. The board set that in the budget, and they'll look to make those decisions as we come closer to and maybe into the school year. In the normal course of events, when we have retirements from the teaching ranks, we see what, you, what you've already seen a minute ago, which is a reduction because of the actualizing of the staff that are there. In many cases, we budget for the person that's still in the seat because when we save the money in the subsequent year, we use that to pay the retirement stipend to which they are entitled under the collective bargaining agreement. In this case, for two reasons. One, because there were a number of retirees, and we think we may be able to, we may be able to satisfy all of their retirement payouts as a part of the, this budget. And two, because we're talking about putting a building project on the ballot and really don't want to do everything we could to try to keep this budget down. We've shaved $120,759 off the anticipated teacher retirement value for folks that are retiring in June and will be replaced by less expensive staff next year. So that actualization that's an offset to salaries in most years, which you saw nice and raw at 140000 this year because I don't have any teacher increases in this budget there in the Warren article for the negotiations, another year you won't be able to see that. We're taking it ahead of time. But we're taking it or doing it so that we can try to keep that budget down to give a greater possibility for the taxpayers to be supportive of the, of the bond article. A couple of more elements. In the area of non-union, support and administration, 
all your non-union staff, custodians, the technology team, our secretaries, department directors. Uh, there was a proposal accepted of an increase of 1.5 percent. Uh, the principals chose, uh, I mean, excuse me, the, uh, the, the board recognizing the demands of the principals and seeking to keep our principals, uh, retain them for all of the quality uh, work that they do. Uh, we just got done lauding, uh, lauding the doctoral accomplishment of Dr. Stet uh, Dr. Costa. Uh, we, they, they proposed 2.5% uh, on, the, on the principals. The details of those are included in uh, a single page in, your, in the, the info tab of your uh, budget book. That's about $42,000 of the increase. And then the board decided to increase that merit bonus pool that we've been talking about for the last handful of years from $30,000 to $40,000. We've had some conversation at this table about what bonuses look like in industry. And in this case, we're talking about 20 some odd people that, that this applies to. Uh, and so that number was added, $10,000. So the total in this area, $51,946. The rest of the proposed budget is wrapped up in all of the payroll-related things of the payroll related expenses that total 52,161 of reduction. We had some miscellaneous supplies reduced of uh, $1,500. Some increases in grounds, playgrounds uh, uh, were 13,000 plus some additional vehicle uh, costs of, a th of uh, 500 or 1,000, I guess that broke down. And then the board increased the field trip line by $6,000, 2,000 at each of the buildings, recognizing the ever increasing costs of the transportation. Uh, and those field trips, and recognizing that we were only doing um, we're only doing six thousand now, adding six thousand, the majority of that cost is being borne by the parents and by the donations that come from PTA and others. Uh, all of that nets a total of eighteen thousand four hundred and thirty six dollars. And if we lump those back together, the 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 total decrease is seventy two thousand three hundred and sixty. Like I said, that shaves point three six off the the default. As a result, go back to the first slide, and, and it says, today we have 20,084,000 with a default of 8.86% and a request that's 0.36 lower. The proposed budget, 20,184,320. It'll be one article number two. It's a half of a percent increase, and it represents, on today's tax base, it'll be a tax impact of 3.7 .7 cents. Every year I try to give you the revenues. So on page 14 of your, of your handout, you'll see the revenues. There is not much in the way of news in, in the area of revenues, other than to tell you uh, there is a, an uptick in our share of the health trust slash L, the, the LGC returns. So you'll see that uh, every year when those dollars come in. We're seeing them come in September because of our, uh, our participation in the July pool. They come sometime mid to late September. And those dollars have been going out to retirees and active employees, their share uh, in uh, the end of October, 1st of November. In 1617, we anticipate that, that the district's return, the district share, would be somewhere just above 136,000, just above 130,000. Otherwise, it's fairly predictable, and these revenues are essentially flat from what we proposed uh, or what we estimated at tax rate setting a couple of months ago to what we think next year will look like, a difference of about 10 grand. <coughs> okay, so there's also, at the very back of your packet, there's a draft warrant. Uh, please note that all the highlights are there to signal that I didn't want to retype or untype, but I just highlighted nobody's taken a vote and, and, and made recommendations on any of these. Obviously, that's we're at the very beginning of that process with you, and, and the board hasn't passed muster on all of the warrant articles either. So, But to give a sense, Article 1 we hope to talk about in just a few minutes in terms of the, uh, the building project at Hampton Academy. But if you can walk through this slide about the warrant with me, I would tell you that Article 1, as it's anticipated right now, would be raising and appropriating only enough for the first year interest payment, which would be 460000 and cost us $0.17. Cents. We'll go back to that when we talk about the project in a second in terms of what that really means and how it would play out. Op Article 2 is intended to be the operating budget, which we just got done talking about. That will cost the $0.3.7 cents that I mentioned. Article 3, which we'll walk through in greater detail when we're back in January to talk to you about a warrant, uh, is uh, $239,021. That's about $0.8.8 .8 cents per thousand. And we anticipate the long-term maintenance article will be there again. No real impact because that's there every year. 
And uh, although we've seen a draft of the Sacred Heart article, we haven't yet seen the petition. That's not really due till January. But right now, the placeholder number on that is 45,600, which is 1,150 bucks less than last year. So no real impact or savings there, negligible. So we still have some things we want to talk about. I certainly want to take questions. But I, uh, at some point, I'll make sure that I consider for you and for the board and the public We'll be back to talk to you about warrants at some point. We'll have the hearing on the budget. There'll be a hearing on our bond, which will be another important date. And then the deliberative session is the 2nd of February. And I would pause the second packet that was at your desk is to talk about the Hampton Academy project. But let's, I guess, if the chair is agreeable, let's talk about the budget first, and then let's we can take some time on that. Let's do the budget first, and then we'll move on to exciting stuff. Um, questions on this side about the budget? It's incredible when it's laid out like this, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And on this side, Sandy. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, can you break down for me what the percentage on um, the warrant article number three uh, for the salaries? You said one. Oh, point. oh, warrant number three for the teachers. Yeah, I'm just, I'm I, just for the negotiating. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a four year. Yeah, it's a four year deal. It's a three year deal. I thought it said four. Four, no, that's somewhere else. Three, four year, four year deal. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's the other contract. Hold on. <laughs> I got it right here. Yeah. And. Um, Page 15. Four year deal. The, the salary schedule itself. No, I'm looking for the percentage. Right. The, the scale year. itself is going to move half a percent. Every step in the scale right now is 3.75. The scale itself will move 0.5 so that those that are not yet at the top will see four and a quarter. Okay. Those who are at the top are essentially moving up in column virtual steps or shadow steps and they're advancing 175, 1 1.75 each year of the four. So it's the same so same it's thing happening each year, but happening four right. times. So four and a quarter for those in the grid, one seven five off the grid. And I have a when we come in January, I'll bring you a, you know the talking points, you know about a page of them. But that's the money side. Right. I think that, I think that's all I have. Anyone else? I've got just a couple. Um, Going back to page 14 on the uh, LGC returns, yes, they keep on coming. So you did get a return in September of this year, the 68th one, and this figure for 1617. When is that anticipated, Nathan? Is that them telling us? No, this is. I <laughs> Taking a big deep breath and thinking this through because I had this I had a conversation with uh, with DRA because it appears I may do it differently than most. I my estimate of the of the 136 is pretty close because I didn't know what that number would be when we went to tax rate setting. Mm -hmm. So the money that we just got in September, I didn't estimate in the <coughs> I know now that I've done it that my 136 is what I've got left over. But that'll come back next year as a named revenue. So the 68 that you just got was what I actually paid out last fall. But I don't pay it until the middle of November. And so I don't have the don't have the analysis and the data done to be able to put it on the tax rate back on the first of September. Plus we don't have the check until the end. So I had the conversation with the DRA and they said, well you you have reason to believe it's coming. And I said, well I I have reason to believe catastrophic aid is coming and building aid is coming, but it doesn't always happen. So and the other thing is I don't like to have it personally, I don't like to have it fall to fund balance and just be wrapped up because that doesn't give us the opportunity to talk about it, recognize it, and say, hey, you got that from LGC again this year. So I've been consistent every year that we've done it, but that which we get in, if we get it, if we get it after September and we don't do the analysis and pay it out until November, I recognize it as a revenue of the subsequent period as opposed to guessing what it's going to be beforehand. DRA likes materiality. <laughs> They're accountants, right? And so that's, well, you know, that would be material. And I said, well, then you can make me you can make me put it in the in the fund balance, but the way we do it, it benefits the taxpayer at the exact same time on the exact same tax bill, but it's got a big name beside it that tells you what it is. Mm -hmm. So I, the 136 is not really a guess. It's 
It's within a couple of $182, I think, of the exact number. The wiggle room? Yeah. yeah. Pretty good for the anticipation. And that, so that's, did we hear about the town on that? No. Uh, so I'm, st I'm still talking to DRA about it. They're not sure they <laughs> like it. They, it sounds good to them, but they're not sure they, I'm the only one, I guess, that's describing the process that way. But so. they can give you a verbal opinion. That's right. <laughs> um, and I have one more question. I'm going back with here to page eight. The merit pool, you said that yes. it's being increased $10,000, it covers 20 people. Now, that merit distribution are for those of that 20, or is it all 20, that merit that bonus? I, I'll speak to that. Um, the, merit, uh, the merit pool of money is based on performance. And so all of the folks that are eligible for the merit are evaluated based on their performance from the previous year. And they're allocated a, an amount of money um, uh, to, to, um, to signify uh, their effort uh, in performance. Will distribution of the entire pool be put out, or will it again Not necessarily? Okay. Um, it, because it is based on performance, I think that's um, the answer I'm looking for. We have good years and bad years, and people understand that, and um, we work together on that. Never used it up. She hasn't spent it all yet, any <laughs> given year, I have to tell you. Well, I, I, <laughs> I, I know the number better than I do. <laughs> yeah, I'm, the reason I'm bringing that up is because we have sat together other years, and um, merit bonuses are used in two different ways in two different budgets. Yep. And this is my part of the commercial as we wrap up talking about this budget, that at the end of your year, your fiscal year, you do turn over to our general fund whatever you have left. That's right. That's right. So it does come back to us. So whenever we are looking at the school budgets, if we guess a little wrong and give a little too much sometimes, we get it back and we always see it come back. The the, um, the the process is is a good one too because um, you know uh, I work on the performance reviews I work with those folks mm -hmm. um, and you know we have discussion and dialogue um, and then I make recommendations and I bring those recommendations to the school board now the school board doesn't evaluate the only person the school board evaluates is me. Mm -hmm. Um, and and they assign a number for a bonus. Should I get one? But clearly, this is a bonus. Yes, it Superintendent is. Right. Murphy. This is not. Uh, this doesn't. It, um, it is, doesn't go forward in the right. salary. It's a one. -time. And that's what I want to point out because, especially for new members right. on this committee, we uh, we see merit increases in two different areas yep. that we approve. In this case, it truly is a merit. The entire amount may or may not be used. Right. Whatever is left will go back to our general fund, and it will not be carried forward automatically right. in another year. Right. When it comes to the municipal budget, we're talking about merit increases that are used as mid-year raises, and they do carry forward right. not only into the budget but also into the default budget. So excellent job on how you – I like this program a lot better, to tell you the truth. Baselines are not bumped here at all. Right, right. So thank you. It's sometimes when we put the same name on two different things that are functioning totally different, I always feel I've got to do a little bit of a commercial uh, and how this is being used, and I think it's being used very well. Thank you. That's all I have. Brian, and then Sonny. Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> okay. Um, I went by the main book. Yep. So I apologize. I'm just going to call it numbers. That's why we do it for you. <laughs> um, the paraprofessionals, 2210-50336. Um, yep. We seem to have really jumped up yeah. what we're doing with them. Yeah. All right, 2210? Yeah. Two one zero. Give me the next number. What line item? Two two one zero dash five. Oh, it's on two do. Yeah, two two one zero dash five page. 
That's not unprofessional. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. That's not That's paraprofessionals. Keep going. Yeah. Go to the bottom of the page. The bottom of the page, you see that pop from 8 to 98. Yeah. You, pr you just wanted to prove you read the whole thing, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> that well, is, that's no, the placeholder. I when I went through, again, when we went through the narrative a second ago, the board set aside $90,000 for staffing support, for curricular support. Right. Unsure whether it's going to be uh, half a position, one position, aid, support, teacher. I mean, I, it's a $90,000 number, and that's the line I put it in. So uh, that's not paras. That's actually curricular salaries for work related to supporting curricular development and improvement of instruction. So this is for the regular teacher regular versus teachers, the parents? Yeah, Brian, w with the new um, science curriculum, the mm -hmm. new standards, the work that we're doing in STEM, um, we identified that um, some of our teachers needed support in those areas, especially the elementary teachers who are not as accustomed to doing the science and yet it's very important. We also identified that we needed to do more work around inquiry part of, of science and helping the kids to um, write about what they've learned in science. And, and the board recognized that as based on the data that we received from our test scores. And so they were, um, they were supportive in helping me to put in um, some positions to support those teachers just for, the, just for this year to help boost up the work that our teachers are doing in science. So either it will be either through professional development, it will be through some consultants that I might choose to use for a short period of time to do some work with our with our classroom teachers. Will these people be used for um <coughs> so that's for history if you're gonna do that next year? Right. That's why the money is there. So we have. It's, we're, we, if, you, if you notice the curriculum cycle that I did, we slide from R and D, research and design, to implementation, to evaluation. So any curriculum is three years really in the making. You can't do all of that in one year. Right. So when we start, like with science, we're on. We're at the implementation stage. Next year we'll be evaluating it, and the, and next year we'll be doing social studies. They kind of they kind of cross over on each other. So yes, we'll be using it for that too. Social studies is a little bit easier for us. Our teachers have, as we reviewed their, um, their skills, we, we, we recognize that there's more strengths in social studies than there was in science. So we'll probably be spending more money, not probably, we will be spending more money in the area of science. Science, technology, engineering, and math. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, How are we doing with the cable fees? Um, we're doing great. Um, the the uh, Board of Selectmen just uh, uh, approved our request uh, for $35,000 in order to fund uh, the program and the operation of Channel 13. We're, we're very pleased with that. I mean, this, the, this, this programming on that from the time the kids get up in the morning then during the day, it's kind of more meetings. And then when the children get out of school around 3 o'clock, we have more children-related things. We have mm -hmm. teachers reading stories in the afternoon and lots of things that happened in school. So it's become a, a great tool for us and I think for the community. And from an accounting perspective, you see that section 2224 is where the spending is. Right. If you go back to your revenue sheet, you'll see under local, you'll see that number again coming in as a revenue to wash it so that it's an offset. Period, yeah. And, and I, I'm very supportive because as we build out the TV station and the, and the opportunities that we have for the cable, um, the Board of Selectmen was very clear to us that, you know, that money is tight. There's only 1% of the entire budget. It's about $70,000 that they have budgeted. So between the school and the town, it's pretty tight. So they may be asking to, uh, for, with, via a warrant article, to increase that budget so that we can spend some of that franchise fee. That was the answer. I, I think you'll for. see that. And uh, we want to be very supportive of that. Mm -hmm. And close to my last question on the grounds and field, we have a 58% increase from 2014. What is, I know they're not in great shape. Oh, no, no. You know what? It, it, it's simply in the 
This is five years now we've been here, and I haven't let Mr. Lasardi increase that any year. But if you go back and you pull the books, we're overspending that account, those accounts, every single year. Not for mowing, but for the work we're now doing with hydro seeding and slice seeding to try to maintain and, 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 you know, and, and prolong their life or you know, to sustain them. Uh, the work that we've done, uh, the budget always held items like repainting the stripes on the, you know, the, the pavement mm -hmm. on, the, on the parking lots and multiple times bringing chips into the playgrounds and fluffing them up underneath the equipment. What, it didn't, what, it, what we didn't necessarily have the money for has been the commitment that the superintendent and I have made to giving Keith the okay to fix it, improve it. We now do two cleanups. We do a cleanup in the fall and in the spring. We do a cleanup in the spring and in the fall and in the fall. The spring cleanup just seems to accomplish so much more now that we do a fall cleanup before the snow hits because there's not so much left under there and it's it's been a real boom I think to the grounds. Mm -hmm. We also have it has seemed every year been hit with things that we hadn't anticipated and they challenged that budget like repairing the granite curbing at the academy around the bus loop. We put a chunk of dollars into the, uh, uh, the, the pond, the dam, mm -hmm because of the ducks and all the erosion, working with co conservation, the state came in. Uh, that project was 80 something, $8,500 or something. So they're not budget killers all by themselves, each of these, but we made an increase only because the actuals, and even now, if you go back and compare what we're budgeting for next year, it doesn't still meet the actuals we've seen every year, but we also, and some of this is a bit of a contingency, because I can't tell you all of the projects that will happen, but five years running, it consistently has happened. And so um, some of it, I think, has been Green World is the, one of the companies that we've been using to do um, all the grubbing and the, and the seeding and such. Their annual program, I think, is costs more than we had had in the budget initially, going back five years. But every year he says, we should bump up grounds. And every year I say, meh, <laughs> not right now. <laughs> so this year we did. So uh, it's a bit of a contingency, and I think it's something we can definitely talk about next year to see what did you spend? The intent is not to go freewheeling and just do a bunch of stuff, but it's the fact is every year there seem to be things that we have deferred and kicked down the road, and so we really have, have appreciated the opportunity to just stay committed to fixing stuff as it is. I was just wondering if there was an actual plan, you know, something you... And it, for a, for a, so a significant portion of that budget, yeah, it's, it's the mowing contract. Uh, you know, shout out to Liberty. They're doing a uh, they, uh, they're doing a great job this last season. Uh, the Green World who's doing all that work. I can tell you, for instance, the next one coming up, there weren't enough provisions included in the in the um, in the cleanup and the restoration elements of our center school project. So when we put that two classroom addition on, we did everything we could. I don't know if you remember, but our, the original number was supposed to be eight hundred and fifty nine thousand. We did it for five hundred and fifty when it was all said and done. And uh, and even returned thirty thousand dollars. Probably should have kept the thirty thousand and fixed tuck two. I think is what they call it, because the outfield of that little that little baseball diamond leading up to the building is abysmal. There's the rocks. I mean, we've done some work to clean up some of the rocks. Our, our grounds crews have done some stuff, but that's got to be probably on the order of ten ten some on ten twelve thousand dollars. It needs to be it needs to be cleaned up. Reseated, and, and there's one of the things that'll happen out of that this coming cycle. Okay. Um, last question. Page two three two zero dash seven. Office equipment rental. That's up forty seven percent since two thousand fourteen. Is there any way we can purchase any of these? I know we used to do this at the company I worked for. Right. I just want to see the page and make sure I know what I'm about to talk about. Okay. Here's the... As opposed to rentaling and leasing? Yeah, yeah. This. this is actually... The jump The jump in this account mm -hmm. is uh, we're, we're moving forward with a, an archiving system. So it's under office equipment rental, and it's probably a misnomer because this is really software and optical storage hardware. Right. The idea is that it's connected to using scanners on the copiers, and that's why I ended up in this area. It's a solution that uh, allows us to take originals, scan them, and then shred them because the, the industry accepts the image that we scan in as an original, 
uh, and we don't have to keep the original any longer. So for all of our special education documentations and files on this student and that student, all of our uh, accounting records from paying the bills and so on and so forth, all of that over time, we'll be able to commit to this archiving. And, and instead of buying it outright, uh, we're leasing elements of it because of the cost of the software. It's it doesn't rise to a, a major debt. I mean, it's uh, it's in the it's in the I forget now. The budget was driven by it, but it's twelve thousand, fifteen thousand dollars maybe for the software. And w to go with it, we'll have to have some um, optical storage. You know, we probably have a good chunk of the of the storage that we need, but we're talking terabytes of data now that we'd be sticking out on the network, and so. It, I'll move it another cycle and put it in an, in an account that makes more sense, and you'll see this fall down. But that's something that we intend to start this winter, and the costs will be real for next year moving forward. That's why the line bumped up. And that is cheap at the moment. Yeah, when yeah when it's less expensive. But I mean, is this something that's going to go on for a few years? Whatever. This one, more this off, one, you know. This one will go. The costs related to that will go three years. After that, though, there's software updates and maintenance that will be almost as much. Yeah. Not quite, but in order to keep it updated and goes over, there'll be a maintenance cost. But again, that really that really could dial its way into our software line. Right. But we were doing it what we were doing was in this line okay. in terms of scanning and saving, so that's where I that's where I put it to start. Okay. It's a I great question. That. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm done. For now. Thank you, Sonny. Yeah. And then and Nick. It's also a pleasure to read your budget. You know, it's impressive. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, as a member of the budget committee, we have to come up with a budget for the whole town, right? You've got your budget when it comes to share in the town, and there's a lot of unmet needs in the town. As I was looking through, I could see the number of students. That sticks right out for 1,100, right? And well, I'm just curious. By category, how many teachers, how many aides, how many... In other words, the number of employees, not the dollar amount, in each category, it would it would help. I can seek to put that in the book another cycle so that you'll have it moving forward. We just negotiated with teachers, and the total FTEs, one nineteen point five teachers. That includes the therapists, the specialists, everybody that's yeah. on a teacher contract. They had a list of teachers, and, and, and you know, it added up to about a hundred. Yeah, and they're in there, right? And then, if you go pick up, if you go pick up the all the ologists, and you pick up library and nurse and, yeah. and, uh, and guidance, special ed, and special ed and you'll get to 119 yeah. teachers. My category will help. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's, I'll find a page that we can do that on. So, so you know, the paras, the paras are, there's, there's seven and a half, or eight, eight or eight and a half maybe, that are on a federal grant, and we have 16, I think, in the budget, so there's about 24, 25. And then there's another handful that are on Title I that are working with uh, uh, reading and math services. Yeah. We have um, the other staff includes about... Well, can you put a total number on all the people to work for us? Yeah, if I don't count the subs, we're right just shy of 200. 200. If I added the teachers, the paras, and then I tack on the 13 custodians, the four members of the tech, uh, the, the three members of the technology team, the eight secretaries, and, uh, and the 10 administrators. And then if I throw in Mary's 13, 11, 12, 13 food service people, I think those numbers would get you right to yeah. about 200. Okay. You know, I'm not trying to. Oh, no, it's a great question. Yeah, it's because I don't, I don't there, put it in the book, there's but so I many un could. unmet needs for the town, yep. you know, and I see what's happening this year. Each department's coming in with Warren articles. You know, it's the numbers are going to get in a real. The other aspect is, I understand in the end of a report, the retirement fund for the town, you know, if the state uses an 8% projection and their return is a lot less, they're going to show in the annual report the town's liability for their pensions. Ours too. Yeah. I mean, Don't let I, it frighten you. I, I, I asked them if we, could, if we could borrow the money and pay it, and they said no. <laughs> it, was not an, it was not an offer. I didn't think, and somebody else asked the question too. Yeah, I, it's not our legal liability, but you can't argue with accountants, especially well, those in Washington. You know, so. If the state doesn't pay it, somebody's going to pay it. Well, I think they'd be hard pressed to come it, chase all of our communities yeah. for it. <laughs> it's future but, employees that have yeah, the problems. That have the problems, for sure. But that is a staggering number when that hits, right. well, giving well, that up among us. But you'll see that on the, on the audited report, for sure. 
Nick? Welcome back. Uh, wonderful report. Uh, I don't really have questions so much as I uh, just wanted to say that I believe back in uh, June, I think it was June, um, the IT subcommittee came to Hampton Academy, um, met two of your people Greg that worked there, Greg and Dave, I believe it yep. was. Uh, what a wonderful staff you have in that IT department, and, and those two gentlemen. They were um, very willing to in, uh, take in all of our questions. We discussed <coughs> some of the future plannings, uh, the one-to-one -one Chromebook initiative. Um, and it's good to see that they're projecting forward, too. Um, I kind of fine tooth comb their budget because that's kind of my thing. It looks looks very good to me, and I love the supplemental material you provided with it. Uh, I just want to say kudos in that department, especially um, I think we all d agreed as an IT subcommittee that that was kind of setting the benchmark as far as uh, adaptation of technology, um, especially in the town sense, um, in areas in this town. It is very, very well done. So kudos to your IT department. And that's that's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Michael. I'd like to uh, echo exactly what Nick said. It was, it was a pleasure. And what I like about it, they're looking, like he said, looking ahead. They're not just sitting on their laurels. We're looking, looking ahead. I really appreciate that because the town is sort of moving in the same direction, but they're quite a ways behind, so to speak. And uh, the other thing I wanted to make a comment about is the way you presented your budget with the default and the actuals for the years on every page. Excellent. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. We have, unlike <clears throat> previous years where we voted on the number, this year what we're doing is going through the review this way, almost like testimony, and this committee will be doing its final review in January and giving all the numbers out at that point in time. So there will be no vote tonight, but excellent budget, excellent review. Done an excellent job. So can we? Yes, we can. Can we play for a few, couple more minutes about something? I say play because it's. Now we got really colorful things that can be exciting. And <clears throat> you want to introduce the uh, subject you matter? I can. You want and that I'm one first? Go. Yeah. So well, there were no, four pages. Four right. pages that that were behind your budget packet tonight. Yeah. One is a cost sheet related to a building project. The second is the punchline in terms of affordability and tax impact. Shh. Don't say anything about that yet. And then, <laughs> and then the, the larger landscape sheets are. Uh, are a, a couple of graphics that the superintendent can walk you through. So, yep, I'm, I'm just going to throw a little commercial in here. We have not talked about warrant articles yeah. from department to department. This is a big one, and we don't have the opportunity to have the schools with us often, and we're only going to have one more opportunity when we review all the warrant articles. So we thought we'd give a little bit of a heads up tonight because they have the green light from their board. Mm -hmm. And this is one of a two-part series. Am I correct on that, Nathan? Yes, we'll come back. We'll come back with more when we do our warrants. But boy, this is a got to. It has to be a big public conversation, and you're an important part of that. And we thought if we started here with some of the some of the folks who watch at home, it would be an important uh, kickoff maybe for the conversation. I'm trying to figure out how to center this thing right now. <laughs> well, that looks pretty good. Is that good? So with yeah, that, I'm not going to say another word. And so I think I'll start off just to. And if you don't mind, I'm going to stand in case I need to point. I don't have on my little, uh, little laser, so. Uh, but a point. So the last night at the, at the school board meeting, the board heard uh, the presentations from their team of consultants, and uh, they voted 5-0 to support the um, project and to move it forward. So we felt like tonight we could talk about it because they took that position. Um, Hampton Academy sits on a five-plus acre lot, um, and so it's a very tight lot, and, uh, and so we have to keep that in mind. Um, there was a very clear um, emphasis to maintain the current look of the building, the brick, the, the, all of the pieces of that building that have um, historical importance, and so that was very important. So if I can just start out in the front, this is your current building in here, all the way down to here, um, right straight down. That's all the current building uh, that is at Hampton Academy. Uh, 
the, the sections of the building, and I'm going to get into a little bit more detail, will be back here um, where this music and chorus and band uh, will also, um, on the second floor, there will be art. Uh, we are um, pr proposing an auditorium. There is not a facility in the community that the Hampton School District can use on a regular basis to be able to have performance. It's lacking. Not only is it lacking for the, for the school district, but um, much of the input that we received from the community when we were doing questions and surveys was is that they felt that this being a community school, that that service of having an auditorium was very important. So the auditorium will be in here where the current Eastman gym is. There'll be a new student entrance right here. This is the gymnasium right here. And you'll see that more clearly on the next sheet that I show you. Uh, you'll see a dotted line down here. That's just a proposal in the future should they have, desire some recreation space. As you know, I'm sure you've heard from Diana Martin about the needs of recreation. We, they penciled that in. It's right where the basketball court is at, at Hampton Academy. But it's certainly, it's not in the project. Uh, one of the things that was really important was around safety. Right now, we have, we have um, parents parking all on Academy Ave. I don't know if you've ever been there in the morning or in the afternoon. It's not a, as safe Avoid as... Avoided. Yeah. Say that again, Brian? Avoided. Yeah, avoided. Well, that's what uh, many people do, but unfortunately, you, sometimes you can't. And um, so we wanted to take that all off of Academy Ave. So the proposal has a two-lane kind of a situation where parents would come in and they would use this lane for the kids and this would be the bus. The kids would come in here, the bus would drop them off, cross the sidewalk, right into their entrance. We do have a separate student entrance, separated from the main entrance, which is up here, um, and we will have a small area here for handicap parking. Right now, if you go to Hampton Academy, it's very difficult if you have disability to get around. You can go into the cafeteria and then you, then then up a then an up an incline which doesn't meet standard um, and then you can find the elevator but it is very difficult school to get in and out of so um, the, the goal was to create a handicap here. Adults use this front entrance, students use this entrance. That's safety. You don't want to be mixing students and adults entering the building at the same time. Uh, why don't you move that little speaker over right about the corner that Nick has in front of me because we can't hear you on the TV when you're standing over there. You can't. Okay. So, okay. Just move that over close to the corner and then talk into that a little bit more. Pick it up. I don't know how comfortable I am with that. There you go. <laughs> I think that should work. Thank you. Will that work? Okay. I think so. So that's kind of the layout of the, of the site. Um, and um, I could get into it. you go to the next slide? Which is, which one are we going to use, Nate? The, uh, the so if you take a look at this, you'll see the each floor of the building. Starting down at the lower level, this is um, where you, I'll try to give you some points, uh, cafeteria. So let's start there. This will, no, you know how right now you can drive in there in this road parking, that will be eliminated. One of the things around safety and a recommendation when we did our safety analysis was that we needed to avoid that, uh, that having cars come that close to the building was not a safe and wise thing to do, so we've eliminated that. Cafeteria will remain the same, but we do need to expand the kitchen. Um, we've received a number of um, dings from the department because the kitchen is so small that we don't have the appropriate space for food preparation as well as um, things like dish dishwashing and all that. So uh, the, the staff has no place, to, there's no locker, uh, there's no um, facilities there for them. So we added those things so that the kitchen is a little bit bigger, as you can see right in here. Uh, we also added here, as you know, uh, the TV channel 13 has been a big part of our work. Our students are now producing a weekly show. They're also going live. And so we have an area where we can do some um, meetings that will be broadcast live. So this area will be for, uh, for our, our TV and uh, 
Channel 13 and uh, use for students. <coughs> also at the lower level, if you can continue up here, this is the big, this is a, one of the big areas that people were really concerned about and that was the gymnasium. <coughs> Either one of the gymnasiums at Hampton Academy are suitable for our students to play basketball in. They're undersized. Uh, and they're just not, the lower gym is not safe. Uh, the wall is is not much of a baseline where you, you're right to the wall. Upstairs in the Eastman gym doesn't meet the, the standard for regular basketball. Um, unfortunately, we've been renting space at the rim so that our kids can go over and uh, girls and boys at Hampton Academy can play basketball and um, other activities. We were sharing Marston. You know, we were trying to do that and, and avoid this, but Marston has afternoon activities almost every day. You know, our days are extended now. You know, it used to be all the kids got on the bus and at 3 o'clock they went home, right? Well, that's not the case anymore. Students are very active after school in a lot of programs. And so uh, when David tried to schedule his, his teams, there wasn't any space. But this is also a community facility. We've been very clear about that. The, the recreate Diane Martin sat on our committee and you know she does have a need for additional gymnasium space for her programs and for the programs that are supported by HYA um, so we feel that this is a the kind of a facility that the community can use we also added one more thing on this lower level we added a community room <coughs> and based on the survey that we received and again we survey parents teachers students um, uh, seniors, uh, admi administrators in the town, uh, anybody that would come in and, and do the, um, uh, the survey with us and the questions and answers, we actually had face-to-face -face, uh, time with them, was a community room, a place where seniors could go. So we have added into this community building a 1,400 square foot room that we would um, be able to share with our seniors and they would be able to use for their activities. Right now, they're downstairs in the basement at the library in a very small room where they really can't do the kinds of activities that they like to do, the arts and crafts and the, and the meals and, the, and that kind of thing. And so when they're not using it and it's a community room, it's open for the community to use. The nice part about it is even on weekends, we can shut this down. This will be all community on weekends and vacations, and then we can close off the school portion of this building uh, in order to protect classrooms and equipment and all that. So that's the bottom floor. This part over here, which is currently the old wood shop, if you remember, right now we have um, band down there. Not a good place for kids. Um, that will all be used for storage now. And uh, talk to Keith, you know that we don't have any storage for desks and chairs and things like that. So. And paper and supplies, and we absolutely need to, needed to use that for that kind of thing. Where's the entrance the, to the community room? Hmm? Where's the oh, excuse me? But where's the entrance to the community? Lobby. Next where the buses come in, Brian. Okay. Hey, sorry. I mean, at night and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They would use that entrance. Um, first floor uh, will open up the. Right now, if you walked into Hampton Academy, this is the uh, into the entrance. There will be office space here, the principal's office, conference room, our homeschool coordinator, social worker, um, some specialized areas like guidance counselor, a school psychologist, and some support. And again, one of the real clear messages that we received was people really felt pretty strongly about having an auditorium. I mean, I, I talked to, to your town manager, and, and, and Fred even indicated to me sometimes he has a hard time getting the facilities that he needs for his meetings um, without paying for it. And this, obviously, we have a relationship with the town. We don't, there's no charge when they use our facilities. And uh, so the, <coughs> the auditorium will be uh, where the Eastman gym is. And we're gonna flip it so that the stage is back here the other side this is new this will all be new up in here okay this will all be the new construction but behind the stage will be band and chorus all the music uh, to support uh, 
and then they'll have access to the stage. This building represents six teams, uh, six teams of four on a team, math, science, English language arts, and social studies. And so you'll see throughout the building um, space, here's uh, teams and, and science, did I mean, did I say science? Yeah, math, science, English, and social studies. One of the real deficits in our uh, building at Hampton Academy is the science labs. They're undersized. We only had two science labs out of the six that were met the code. Um, the code requires 1,200 square feet for science labs, uh, except for two. The other four were significantly below that. This plan represents um, science labs, six science labs at 1,200 square feet so that they can do the hands-on experiments um, and the kinds of things that we do in science. Um, and uh, that was, again, a need, and that was recognized as a deficit. Um, so basically, in, on the first floor, you have your, your, your teams, your auditorium, band and chorus, this is just this is just the uh, up, you know, looking down into the gym. That, that that's nothing there. Michael, I have a question for you now. When you have the auditorium and that community room, are you going to be able to televise from those two th uh, rooms? We haven't really talked about that yet, but we need to have that capability because we'll have meetings there. So I thought that was something you were cooking in the plan to have in, everything. In this plan, we haven't quite got to those that level yet of. Okay. of um, what we're doing there, but we need to be able to do that right. because we're we want to be able to we want to be able to film what's happening in here. We right. have a really large kind of a gathering, mm -hmm. it might even be a game or it could be a big meeting. Um, we want to be able to show what's happening in here. If there's again meetings, programs that the kids have. I mean, we have Veterans Day, Memorial Day right. celebrations, plays, chorus, band performances, um, special <coughs> guests. Um, we use it at the SAU for all of our forums. We certainly have the capacity in this plan to video record and produce, etc. She mentioned in the IT areas, there's space there for green room so that the kids can do their video production like they do right now every Friday. They're doing the shark news. And we'd be able to record in the community room and in the gymnasium. The question of connectivity and live transmission from that site, I can't address yet. Don't know. Don't know enough about the architecture and the costs related, and marrying that up with the vendor, in, you know what I mean, with Comcast. So, but within the building, we'll be able to videotape and record. So, if the if the pipe and the tools to connect to the pipe can be made available, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean we're doing all the renovation, and now is the time no, to right. run the right. wiring. Run right. the exactly. Right. That's all I was trying. Right. to Got a hundred thousand in that line item. Do you? Yeah. Uh, trans uh, technology. Good so, I, I, you know, I I don't envision. Having you know that being that expensive, you know, it's kind of hard to do it after you got the building. Yeah, right. we need, we, when the we, walls no, are down. We want to be able to do <laughs> that. For, right. We want to be able to do that. I just yeah. don't have the exact number yet, sure. Michael. Thank you, Sunny. Yeah, my concerns were, you know, this is a multi-year project, obviously. Yes, it is. You know, and what happens to the students during that process? Yeah. If you recall, I suggested that you add on to the Center Street School a new academy because you've got there's a lot of land in the recreation area, you know, and that wouldn't disrupt any. You could build a brand new building. You're talking twenty five million for this. I suspect you could build a brand new building the way you want for not much more. You know. Well Four, five years ago when we came here, there was a price for twenty eight million for a new school. I so I can imagine it would be up in the thirties. Um, there was a great desire to maintain this building and that it be, that it represented the fabric of the community, that everyone had a long history with it and, and, and uh, had a lot of, uh, you know, so that was the, that was the uh, difficult part. We, we do know that we may have to move some youngsters, and I proposed last night to the school board to consider, we haven't finalized it yet, but to keep the fifth graders at Marston for one year. Because the, this this is going to be where the current sixth grade wing is, and they're going to demolish that sixth grade wing, and that's where the gym will be. So during that time of ten months, when that this section is being built, okay, the sixth grade would 
be, as fifth grade, would stay at Marston School. And we would keep the third graders, <coughs> they're actually second graders, we would keep those second graders at center as third graders for t the 10 months while this construction went on. Now that's not carved in stone yet. We haven't, you know, we haven't, the, the board, uh, I proposed it last night. We haven't had a discussion yet, but that's how we would address the, the issues of the youngsters <coughs> while this construction went on. Because you're right, it is a multiple year phased yeah. in project. Well, the other yeah. aspect is if you went to that area there, you could build an indoor pool, and because I can't believe Hampton doesn't have a pool. My only Whatever. problem is, is okay. I don't want to yeah. maintain it. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay. And there was some discussion about pools. Cool. There was a pool discussion, yeah, but yeah. it got shot down. It got shot down. So, so um, we'll save that for the recreation center. Right. <laughs> Stephen, you have a question? Yes. The, um, is the footprint changing? The question I have for you is. land where the old town office used to be and the piece of land where that building was in the corner of um, courthouse yeah the courthouse okay are you going to be taking any of that land let's there's a there's a, you've got a draft can we go the, back I, to I, the I did map? see that draft warrant yeah, you've got a draft of the warrant let me point to um, can we go back to the map that's yeah. part a lot though yeah. Steve but that's we, we uh, met with um, we met with um, town manager Welsh mm -hmm. uh, because right now right. we lease property mm -hmm. this right parking area right. and we have right away here so that our buses can come in right mm -hmm. right now that's ex that's what's happening right now mm -hmm. so it only made sense that we take on that property so we have proposed to to, to town manager Welsh and we've we've written the Warren articles one for I, them I, to give to I us and yes. for us to accept it, right. but that we would take over this property. Mm -hmm. That okay. way there we would be able to have access to our buses, access for parents, and parking. Yeah, the, for activities that are in the gym or whatever. Yeah. Clearly the, the intent is that the demarcation would be where that entrance where that entrance is. The entrance is an entrance related to the fire station. Yeah. It so would not take the old the town hall the, property or the nor would any of the property yeah. further towards Winnicott. It yeah. would only be those two lots. Right. Okay. Because there was a question, you know, the library wanted to do something. They were talking about uh, ex expanding the library and then changing the end of Academy Lane so that it would go kind of hook around and connect on to Winnicott. And nobody wanted to make a commitment because we wanted to see first what you guys needed. But so it's turning out that you're not going to need those two no, lots. We won't need that. Okay, so the town can make plans to do other things. Yeah. Thank you very much. That answers, yeah. that answers that question. She probably <laughs> wants to make another building. Are there any questions yeah. on, the, on the building itself and the program? I think if you were going to highlight um, the, the building, not only do we address the programs of music um, and, and, uh, and uh, chorus in the band. We also address the need for a facility for gymnasium. We also address the need for expanded cafeteria and kitchen. And so much of the work is core areas. We're, we're our classrooms, we're not, you know, we'll clean them up. Uh, we're going to do some work on staircases. And we also have some um, infrastructure issues to deal with. We have a significant challenge with air quality in that building. Partly because there's no, no no big system of air exchange there. I mean, air exchange is opening the windows and a few fans, so um, the air quality systems will be put in. And heat, so heating and ventilation is going to be important. The plumbing issues are huge. The bathrooms all need to be <coughs> need to be gutted. They are in very they are in disrepair um, and uh, need a significant uh, reno. So that that will be done. We'll also be addressing some needs for our teachers. I mean, quite frankly, our teachers don't have a place to have lunch. They don't have a real dining area or a place that they can have lunch and, and or a workroom. So this building does give them some space so that they can have a workroom, place where they make the kids' materials and do the copying and all the other things, and then have their small group team meetings. So we did address some of that. Electrical systems will have to be upgraded. Um, the, um, the boilers um, 
will also be upgraded so that we can, one, um, as you know, the building is expanding a little bit. Currently, there are 84,000 feet in Hampton Academy, and we're looking to the final number to be around 116,000 square feet. And again, when you think about it, it really has to do with that auditorium, the, the um, gymnasium, and some additional classroom space up in this area. Now, you spent money on sprinkler system in that building. That stays. Mm -hmm. we, when we put it in, we even made, made sure not to put it in the way of where the ductwork would have to go. We put it as far as we could to one side of the corridor running the long runs so that it could remain through a renovation. Uh, we talked about, we'll talk in a minute about for technology and, and furniture fixtures. Our technology, we have a one-to-one -one technology initiative going on with Chromebook. We built out the house with Wi-Fi so that there's sufficient bandwidth and, and connectivity throughout. Those wireless access points don't have to go away, and their technology is certainly current and lasting. We may have to add a few more because of coverage in some of the newer areas, um, but we will maintain and, and reuse all of that investment so we don't, we don't lose it. We even did a, a survey of all of the furniture, fixtures, and equipment so that we wouldn't have to replace things. So we believe that 75% of the furniture, fixtures, and equipment that's currently in that building can be reused. So, you know, there are some science tables that need to be replaced. They're very old and rickety. So there are some things like that we, that we do have to replace. But pretty much 75% of the current furniture, fixtures, and equipment will be reused in that building. In my experience, when you stop breaking walls, you get all kinds of surprises. <laughs> well, we do, and, and when Nathan um, goes over the budget, we, he'll, we'll show you how we address that, Sonia, because you are absolutely right. Michael, and then the stairways. Brian. And your engineers think they can bring the stairways up to stuff in that old building? So if you go back to the graphic, mm -hmm. the stairwell that's on the high street end okay. of the old building, of the original building, Okay. There's some, there's some fire trap and, and enclosure steps that we have to take, but the rise and the run is fine there. The stairwell that's been of issue is the one that is the second entrance right now on the front face, the Academy Ave face. Yep. Right now, of course, the, the, the final design isn't done in terms of right. the blueprints and all that, but the intent is that that stairwell will be closed off, that entrance will be closed off, and when we no longer have to deal with it being an entrance, we'll have additional room to play with so we can expand to try to address the rise and run to make that more compliant. Because we didn't want to give that stair tower away because when you start considering the traffic flow, when you start considering the movement patterns, it'll be very valuable. And now on the back end, uh, where the uh, student entrance is, there will be a new stairwell there to okay. reach all three floors, and, and that, of course, will be new construction and better. So, yes, we are effectively addressing all of that. Okay. Great question. Hi. I just have one comment. I spoke to my pal the other day, my little info man. I asked him about the gym. What gym? I said, well, don't you guys have a basketball team? Yeah. Don't you see them play? No. He said, I don't know. There's no gym there to really play in. Now, the last few years, I've been a big harp on, you know, physical ed and stuff like that, and we've made all kinds of cuts there over the years. But I couldn't believe that he didn't even know. Yeah, no, there's no real gym. Well, we, we rent space. We are renting. Right, but I mean, for the kids, I mean, now I'm expecting the gym right. there for the, it's those not kids. not safe. Right. It, it's, um, we've had uh, several accidents at Hampton Academy when the kids are playing. And, you know, they're middle schoolers, so, you know, keep that in mind, 13-year-olds and 12- and 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds. They get going, and they're moving, and they've hit the wall downstairs in that lower gym. You can't, it's not safe I've to do it. anything like that. Mm -hmm. Upstairs, it's, um, again, th there's no place on the side for them to, to stop. I mean, they're just they're hitting you the bleachers. We do have pads on, the, on both right, ends. Right, but it's not regulation. I mean, it's I was an eyeball official for they, So they can't have another team years. come and play there. So David's been forced to use uh, the rim. Hmm. 
You got two here now. At a cost. In this plan, you'll go. You can go widthwise two two full courts, or you can play the center court. You know, distance. Yeah. So you're right. It's been a big concern that we needed to address. Thank I you. I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Thank you. Can I ask what will the capacity be of the auditorium? Five hundred and fifty. Because they'll be able to take half the school. Well, we, we've never been able to, you know, we, we have difficulty seating everybody. We have no place to seat everybody. When you take on, you know, 400 youngsters and then you take on, you know, your faculty and then always guests. And when we have a Veterans Day or Memorial Day celebration, we have 50, you know, vets join us. You know, we don't have the space to be able to have, um, you know, a suitable uh, program that encompasses everybody. So. This will allow us to do that. Mm -hmm. And up till now, you use the, what, the cafeteria? We what use mul we use cafeteria and we use the Eastman gym with chairs. Mm -hmm. I know. I raised my children in the school system, and it was always that. And they're all grown up now. No, this much. building is a community building. As you can see, we highlighted how not only do the school kids be able to use this, but our community will. And I think that's a very important aspect to this. I think anybody who's building a building now should be thinking in those terms. We can no longer afford to just build uh, the silos, you know. This is for the school, and this is for this one, and this is for that one. I think you have to really think about how we can work together and collaborate. Um, uh, Mrs. Cooper was on our committee. Um, uh, Diana Martin was on the committee. Uh, the Deputy Chief Hobbs was on our committee. Um, Jason was on our committee from the planning board. So we tried to encompass people in the community that would share what is it that the community needs in order for this to be a building that, because we know it's not cheap, and Nathan's going to talk about that in a minute. <laughs> I'd rather have him tell that story than me. But, well, before, <laughs> before we get to Jason, uh, to Nathan's numbers, I don't know if anybody watches House Hunters on TV. They always break down to three options, mm -hmm. and they rule one out right off the bat, and then it becomes kind of a head game over what options you like after that. And probably if this was on House Hunters, not addressing the junior high, either in a new building or a renovated building, would be the option you'd first throw out because this building and what we have for facilities did not come into the 21st century. All you have to do is just step over the line in your neighbor in Massachusetts. You can easily see why some kids down there have to step up. They've got everything from a technological standpoint, and that's the surrounding communities of where we are. So then you get down to two choices, and you did listen when people said they wanted to keep the junior high or the academy centered in the middle of town. They like that old building. And um, you listened, and that gave you some bigger headaches um, rather than build a new one. So it looks like we've thrown now the second option out there. So what you have looking at you is a plan that was rapidly and concisely developed. I don't ever see anything that you do, Nathan, and this is a compliment to you, as loose or frilly. Every project you've brought us um, and I've been here some time with you, has been concise, has usually been delivered under budget, as you pointed out, although maybe you won't be as generous this time. <laughs> but in every case, we have progressed in our school system as a result. When we look at this, on the budget committee, we're charged with being reasonable, looking at expenses and deciding whether or not they're reasonable for this amount of space, for this amount of renovation, for what it'll provide the community. So with that, I'm going to turn. I was just a commercial, but I couldn't, av no, I couldn't great, avoid doing you. that to you. I know. Uh, this is not, I'd hate to see this be one of those projects that goes back to the drawing board a 100 times because people just don't like to spend money. None of us like to spend money. But we will in some way, shape, or form because, as I started out saying, what we have is not 21st century. And we're, we're producing students, or we have students that we're expecting to produce, and they're sharing, I think, in some cases, one plug in the room. Sure. Technology's I, come a long way. I think it's important to remember that, that the community has been looking at Hampton Academy since 1996. Mm -hmm. And you've had a number of studies. 
um, Brian reminded me last year, please do not do another study. And we didn't do another study. We, we took the information that we had from the studies that were done since 1996 and used that information to help us as we, we developed the plan. So no more studies. Thank you. We'll turn it over to you. So we did the budget in an hour. And uh, I hope this would be a half an hour, but we've hit a half an hour, and so I'm, I'm, I'll try not to talk too fast. People said, I've started to say you talk too fast, and I said, it's only because I have a lot to say. Uh, the total budget proposed right now for this project that the board approved unanimously last night is $24,945,000. The document that is at the front of your second packet, I have on screen for those at home, 24 is the all-in number. That's hard and soft costs and our contingency. Uh, I want to comment on Sonny's question about opening up the walls. I'm really hopeful that we're going to find some time capsules and they're going to have money in them. Because that will help with the unforeseen. You pop open a wall, you find a box, it's got a million bucks. That takes care of anything that you might deal with. First, talk about hard costs. We're talking about a demolition, that the superintendent just described, of the existing sixth grade wing across the back that uh, the back that the lower gym and then ultimately a renovation of 50 some thousand square feet that remain new construction of 60 some thousand square feet which puts us at about 116,000 total underlying that are some estimates remember now this is this is <coughs> this is maybe the best that you can do in this process without doing the next step we have gone through the process and selected an architect, our architectural partner, if you haven't met them, our HL Turner group out of Concord. They have been in and led us through a forensic review of the building to identify everything that they can identify without literally breaking down walls, um, even including exploring inside some walls where they're able, doing some infrared scans and analyses and digging around in the dust underneath, right? That we have then selected a construction management partner. In this case, it's Bonnet Page and Stone out of Laconia. And part of their, part of their selection uh, was not only the work that they've done in the past, but the success they've had with providing safety and efficiency on site in a live site where education is still happening and making that marriage of construction <coughs> and education work safely and productively. So the demolition is included and estimated as are the construction, as the superintendent described in that phasing document of the gymnasium and the classroom wing across the back, and then a renovation of the kitchen one summer, and then the other classroom and office from suites over, over subsequent six and eight month periods where we're moving students in the building and doing renovation in the space. Those costs, as well as the building grounds and site work around, are all included in a hard cost for construction of 21895000 Baked into that are estimates of about $125 a square foot on the renovation side, although there's some square footage in that building down in the bowels that'll need far less than 125 bucks a square foot, and an estimated new construction cost of about $225 a square foot. As it is the standards that these guys have brought, the value of having Bonnet, Page, and Stone in on the project with us now is that instead of the architect envisioning a number and us having to bid it to the street later only to find out that they were close but, but no cigar, Bonnet Page of Stone conceivably could build this building and, and they have done the estimating and they have considered the, the elements that would be included. Now they haven't specced out, for instance, we laughed about it the other night, the, the Marvin or the Harvey windows that we'll put in. But what they have spec'd out is the number of windows and a reasonable price estimate for a very good quality window. They've done the same thing with flooring and with roofing and with siding, uh, and, and all of it are within the parameters of the things you would expect. They're not flimsy windows, they're thermal, there are you know, two panes with argon gas. They are intended to provide for efficient building operation, holding on to as much heat as we can, using as much daylight as we can, et cetera. Sonny, you got to... Yeah. Well, final comment. You're going to pay to tear a building apart, then you're going to pay to build it again. You know, you start without a building, you can build just one building instead of 
two buildings. If right. he happened to be tearing down a building that was built as poorly as they did in the 70s, yeah. it, it can oh, be a benefit and a boon to be the town. Uh, could be the courthouse. It could also be the town offices because this building is a yeah. disaster. Thank you. And it was built as a bank. And it was oh, this, this was a bank. Whatever. Thank you. So the hard cost to 28895 Remember, we talked, we were talking $26 million for a renovation, $28 million for a new construction five years ago when we arrived. That was the number that had been bantered about. So that's the construction. Soft costs in the industry are generally calculated somewhere between 20 and 25 percent. Our soft costs come in at 14 percent and because we've worked really hard. If you haven't yet met them or seen them, we contracted with Trident Building Solutions out of Salem to be our owner's project manager. We contracted with them for this first year to get through this process, and they've been instrumental in helping us to make the choices of the architect and the construction management firm. They also have been worth their weight in gold in terms of the payback on some of the contracting for those two partners and in the scrubbing of this project. They did a great job bringing that hard cost down and they also have delivered on the following. Built, baked into soft costs are the architect and engineering fees. Industry standards put those anywhere between 7.5% and 9%. And if you drop below the border into Massachusetts, they climb to 10 and above. For the architect to do the real blueprints and that 25 million page spec, spec book, right, that the, that the builders will use to, to, to bid and to estimate and to build. Ours. Our total costs for the architect and engineering, as well as the owner's project manager to serve as our conscience and our oversight throughout the project, to assist us with construction administration and all of the bidding that will happen throughout the elements of the construction project, come in at four point, excuse me, six point five percent. So, the architect themselves are often in the seven and a half to nine without you having a project manager on board. Ours are coming together as a package for six and a half. So that. That cost right there comes in at about 1.4 and a half, 1.45 million, and easily could have been in excess of two. Furniture, fixtures, and equipment, we've talked about. The superintendent talked about 75.25. That number's at 150 as a placeholder. Technology at 100,000. And there's another 250,000 built in, and the largest share of that will be in what we call commissioning, which is the after-the-fact testing to test and, sh and ensure that asphalt meets spec, that concrete cured, that steel is reinforced and is true to what its standards should be for tensile strength, et cetera. We'll do commissioning to some degree across the trades, and a, ch a, a bunch of that 250000 will be related to that commissioning. That secures and protects your investment as, uh, as a community in that structure. There's $1.1 in owner's project contingency, and that really is all about, Sonny's, to Sonny's point, the unknown. Now, we certainly have done a fair amount. Let me say, we have, we have or should have some sense, and I don't mean have some sense, but have some confidence, that that which is under the sixth grade wing is somewhat predictable. We've already excavated that site, we've already built on it. And the same is true for most of the elements of the space that we're going to be working with. So that which was of concern to us when we did the center school addition, meaning what's under there, we know. We've actually been in, able to go in underneath the old building and look at the ground and, and, and bore that and, con, and consult or consider what the soil is going to look like in the rest of the site, largely. The only real thing that exists for us moving forward is a contingency against some of the unforeseen things that happen in the market as you move through this process and what might be in the walls. Keith Lassard will tell you that he has abated, we have abated, you have abated, in that building, all known asbestos, every time it's been identified. And at this point, there can't be a ton left. There will be some. There'll be pipe chases that we've never touched and never gotten into, and there'll be asbestos there. We'll find it in some of the, um, in some of the, uh, the mastic, uh, holding some of the sinks together, what have you, that we've never really looked in and touched. When we do, we'll have to abate that. That'll be costs that we haven't necessarily considered uh, and so that owner's contingency, though, if you compare it against the total construction, is is right now in about a 5% range. Mm -hmm. Again, another industry standard would see that number climb as high as 10. We don't think we need to in this case, and we really expect that as we move forward to a guaranteed maximum price with the construction manager, with an approval, and we get the designs done, that number will only fall. It will not grow. Go back and take a listen to the conversation that we had with all of those teammates, those, those members in front of the board. That'll be on the internet soon if it's not there already. 
and they they speak to that maybe more eloquently than I uh, in terms of how that how that money will secure us and protect us through the construction process. Well, those all combined to twenty four thousand twenty four million nine hundred forty five dollars. Um, nine hundred twenty four thousand. Look, you got it. Twenty five million. Yeah. For a couple of bucks. Any questions about that before I tell you how it's affordable? Okay, so. Rather than show the public or try to put through that little spreadsheet, your second page in your packet delivers to you this message. Year number one, the, the, bar, the Warren article will say, do we have the authority to bond for $24,945,000, legal, legal, legalese, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and may we raise and appropriate $460,000, which is the first year interest only payment on the bonding. That will cost you 17 cents per thousand. On the, I called the assessor's office yesterday. They confirmed for me that the average single home value, assessed value in the community is $330,000, average single family home. So that 17 cents on the average single family home will cost you next year at your tax rate an extra $55, $56. It'll boil down to essentially $4.65 a month. Which is real money. I don't want to minimize at all what 25 million means to this community or any community and what 56 bucks a year means to taxpayers. If you happen to be looking at a property value that's assessed closer to 500,000, let's say, that 17 cents will cost you 84.50, $84.50 for the year, it's $7 a month. In the budget that we'll bring you next year, assuming this passes, We'll be adding $875,000 to the budget to make enough money in the budget for the first year debt payment, which includes principal and interest. The tax impact of that will be just over 32 cents a thousand. That'll cost the average $330,000 homeowner $106 a year, just under $9 a month. If you happen to be the proud owner of a half a million dollar home, you're talking about $161, $13.40 a month. That's it. You're there. You've got to keep it up. So for another 18 or 19 years, you'll pay an extra $161 on a half a million dollar house. On the average home of $330,000, you'll pay $13.50 a month, more than you are today for the, next, for the rest of the 20 years. That's the tax impact of doing the project. 17 cents this year. And I understand that that's, there's a lot of other priorities. We just got down a budget that's going to cost 3.7 cents and a teacher contract that's almost 9 cents. So you put it together and we can be talking about 30 cents for the school for this year. That's what that ballot's going to look like when it's all done. But the project itself is 17 year one. It'll be roughly 32 cents year two. A total of 49 cents a thousand of new money. It'll cost you 13 bucks a month. Considerations that we've asked people to think about is why now? Why is this so important? Well, here's, here's some of the thinking. When, when Nathan gave you those numbers, we're talking about a bond rate of 3.15. That's, you know, th that's almost unheard of. We haven't seen rates like that in the bonds for, for a long time. So it seems like an opportune time to take advantage of that loan. If rate. you don't, when we, when we can. And we still may see the Fed jump that up by a quarter of a percent right, between right. now and when we sell the bonds in June. That quarter of a percent will cost you an extra $800,000 over the life of this project. Now that 800000 is broken up into really small pieces, I get that. But still, if you talk about the numbers in the aggregate, let's, let's avoid it. <laughs> let's avoid it. It's a million bucks. And we can avoid that by using the opportunity when the rates are low. The second reason that we chose this time to do it is, is that both Center and Marston bonds have paid off. Uh, Marston, uh, Marston is in uh, uh, 16, August of 16, the bonds paid off, and then Center follows two years later with their bond being paid off for their building, which were both 20 years. So that was another consideration that the school board had when they thought this was an opportune time. Last. Is, is that we do not see, and we've talked to the folks in town, that there's any big, large project in town going on. You know, there's no fire station. We're not doing water and sewer lines yet. But this seemed like the time, there was a window for the school to make this proposal. So those were three factors that really drove us to, to introduce this 
uh, this year. Okay, make me work a little bit hard. All right, I mean, this is this is going to be a big conversation in town, so some, ask a question that I haven't yet heard. Well, the thing is, you're... Wait a minute, Sandy. Jerry, Sandy had a hand up, and then Jerry. I'm going to... Sandy had hers oh, up. Oh, I'm sorry. Saying, that's okay, up. Sandy. Yeah. And then Jerry. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, I think we do have a lot coming up on our plate. I mean, we've, we're looking at some pretty heavy-duty uh, Warren articles for the town and especially with Public Works. So that's, you know, we have to really kind of keep that in the uh, forefront of the brain. The other th question that I have is um, why we're doing this. Is this to bring the middle school concept to a total, because uh, it's not now. I know we're in middle school, but it's not, and it hasn't, and it wasn't when I was on the school board. Um, it was always the dream to do the addition to, and do it so that it would absolutely be a middle school concept. And is that part of what, what your proposal is? And, and um, Kath, can you talk to that as the way you've got the classroom structured? Um, and I mean, it's great that you're putting in a community room for um, senior citizens. So we're all getting there. But uh, I, you know, I'm wondering, is this finally now going to encompass what a true middle right. school you, looks you, like? You're, you're right. I didn't highlight that. But one of the problems that we have right now is, is that our teams are all fractured. We have teams that work together. Some are upstairs, some are downstairs, some are at one end of the hallway, some are at the other. And um, so this um, plan brings those teams together so that their, their math, their science, their English language arts and, and social studies, the kids are together in the team with their teachers. They actually have areas where the team can work together in a team room. So yes, that does do that. And also the program. So now we have identified space large enough to be able to do the kinds of things that we need to do in band and chorus and music, which has been really struggling. We're all over the place over there. No um, unified areas for them, um, along with the art. Um, computers is huge. So not only are we emphasizing the middle school concepts, um, but we're also emphasizing that bringing this building into the 21st century with technology and having those kinds of programs that our youngsters can you know, you know, have good skills and, and acquire good skills through good programming. But that I don't want anyone to believe that Hampton Academy and the staff doesn't do every day an outstanding job with kids. We, 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 you know, we do pretty well, and the kids do very well, and we're very proud of the work. But this will really bring it to the to the to the next level, which has always been the dream. I mean, if you talk to teachers over there. They're very excited, Sandy, for that reason, because they know for a long time they've wanted to do this. Right. And we think that we prepare the kids well for Winnicunnan through the foreign language programs and through the all of the music and the unified arts as well as their core subjects. The technology is really interesting. We went to a one-to-one, -one and, and for the first time this past year, Winnicunnan went to a one-to-one -one with their ninth graders. So our kids easily fed into... Um, the uh, uh, into the high school, which we were quite pleased about. Yeah, I just want to reiterate, you know, the plan has got, from what I can see, exactly what everybody needs and, and voiced their opinion on gymnasium, auditorium, community rooms, and so on. The interest rates are low. We're paying off the debt on Marston and Center. Holding that in. The time, the time is right, you know, and and you know, uh, I don't know what the tax impact is on Marston right now, and Center right now. Twelve cents, and Center's about five cents. Seventeen cents, and that's part of why the tax impact is lower than it could be because we're rolling those in. So when that debt goes away, we slide in this new module, so to speak, and. If it's 155 or 160 a month, that was, that was a, a year. year. A year. On the Excuse average. A year. Yep. That's like 75, 80 bucks every six months. You get your bills twice, June and December. 
75 or 80 bucks more for a facility like that with a low interest rate for bonding entailing everything that these committees and, and communities have indicated we need the debt going away I think the time is right and I think we, we just got to explain it to the people more and more you know the, the fact that these debts are sliding away and we're putting a new debt in here that you know you're not going to see such a monumental jump in your, in your tax impact as a result of that because we're sliding out two and we're moving in one if you will we're just going to have to make sure that people understand exactly what the plan is and what the cost is and and we have to emphasize is that this is about as reasonable as we're going to get i mean this the, the, the current cost per square foot if you take everything in average is 208 dollars a square foot right now and 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 uh, Portsmouth is working a building that's got a 1930 building and they're renovating it and they're adding new stuff and they bid 37 million and they're up to 40 because they've found some things in the renovation part of it that now driving them up toward 40 so here we are <laughs> and they say that they're not going to go any higher than 24,975 that's it that's right. it's guaranteed guaranteed and this contingency we may get a hunk of it back you're gonna have to bond it, right? Right. Anyway, so I mean, you know, I, I you know, I, I. But that's one of the reasons why we also have a low number on furniture, fixtures, and equipment, and technology because we did not want to bond things that wouldn't be here 20 years from now. That didn't make sense to me. Why would no. you be paying interest on something that you had to change over? So we 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 tried to stay away from doing any kind of bonding on those those accounts. The, uh, so I mean, you know, the contingency is only 4.4 percent. I mean, it's 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 below. <laughs> I, I think that the the team, the, the owners, project management, and the construction people and the uh, architects got something here. So it's safe to say, publicly, you're that in favor of it. Yeah. Jerry's in favor of spending 25 million dollars. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm and, it, and it requires a three fifths vote, which is kind I of understand. the super majority. <coughs> three, and fifths, three fifths vote, 60%. I'm going to acknowledge Stephen and then Sandy if you've got another question. No, I'm and fine. And then Scott. No, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Jerry answered my question. Okay. And then, all right, after okay. Scott. I have two things to, to mention. Before this meeting started, I was talking to the chairman of the school board and we have fixed the center school, so that's not something we're going to have to revisit. Okay. We, we um, did some construction at Marston, added the superintendent's office. That's done, finished. We don't have to revisit Marston. We get this done. The town itself um, spent money a few years ago at Winnicunna and did a rehab at that school. So now once this one is finished, we're good. We're good for a long time into the future. And the, um, with the aging of New Hampshire, the aging of Hampton itself, um, the, the, right now, I don't know what the future will be, but there aren't explosions. There aren't uh, baby boomers. <coughs> so that we're going to have to be looking at building additional schools in the future. We're probably going to be pretty good for the next 20 years, maybe more. Well, one thing we have noticed, Steve, is, is that our families that are moving in, this, this past month has been unbelievable. We have 16 new students registered in the last month. We, 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 didn't, we, were, we were taken back by it. But one of the things we're seeing is, is our families are more mature. So we see lighter numbers at center school. They're young, they, it, and it is a little expensive to live on the seacoast. You know, I think you all know that, right? Oh, um, yeah. And but, but what we're seeing is more families moving into Marston and Hampton Academy because they're a little bit more mature, so they have a little bit more, you know, money or uh, financial backing so that they can move into Hampton. But we don't see large spikes in the enrollment. What we see is very flat and moving along at, at, a, at a little pace. I will tell you, though, this last month, and the principals will attest to it, 16 new kids in a month. Yeah, and that's we, huge. we were quite surprised. That's huge. The, the second thing I wanted to mention is that the when you talk about timing, 
and you talk about rates, I know that the Hampton Beach Village District, then we have to look at the whole town, everything, all the moving parts. It's not, it, nobody's in a silo, as you said before. The Village District uh, purchased a piece of land at the beach and made it into a parking lot, parking that was uh, very, very necessary. Um, we borrowed a million dollars at a rate that, I don't remember the exact rate, but it's it's insane. I, I, I told the commissioners, let's go out and buy some more land because the, we, we have a 10-year um, no. We didn't bond it. We were going to, but we ended up, uh, it was better. It was cheaper for us just to get a note from a bank. And the payment um, to borrow a million dollars it's costing us 180000 over 10 years. That's what, when we finally pay it back. To, yes, $180,000 to borrow a million dollars for 10 years. And I can remember when I purchased my first house, okay, and I, the interest was, I think, 11 or 12%. <laughs> and I borrowed, whatever I borrowed, the 20-year note that I took, I was paying double. That's what it amounted to. So... The, you know, timing is everything. And this resolves, after we finish this, we've got, looking at the whole town again, we've got schools, we're all set with the schools, we're all set with the fire departments. We've got, you know, we're, we're hitting, we're getting some home runs now, and things that are going to be done, and we're not going to have to keep revisiting this. So I think that, um, I, I have to agree with Jerry, let's spend the money. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to have a follow-up question. On the um, tax impact, the rates, I, can you walk me through that $0.32 cents again? Is this a, is this net after the savings of the bonds that, that we don't pay? Yes. And I when I, I did it with the board, show that when I, did it with the, when I did it with the board last night, I talked more about that, and it felt like it got a little confusing. So but yeah. if you take that spreadsheet that you've got, yep. so in, in 16, in the year coming, right. March 16, we'll vote. The operating budget includes 335,000 that's paying debt for Marston and 140,000 paying debt for Center. Yes. You'll find that in section 5100 of the budget book. Okay. Okay. We'll ask on the warrant for 460. In the first year, that 460 will cost you 17 cents a thousand, and it'll pay the first interest-only payment. Okay. It'll then be part of the budget after that. The 335. I don't need any more for Marston because that matures after that one payment. So I'll slide the 335 over to join the 460, and I'll raise in the budget a new 875,000. And that's the only new money that you'll see. That's the impact of 32 cents. Okay. And now those three numbers kitted together are 1.67 million, which is my annual principal and interest payment. And now that'll just go for 19 years. Okay. And there won't be any new impact of taxes. You. Collectively, you'll now have 49 cents that you've added to your to your tax bill, but but that'll that's it for the for the 20 years. That makes that better. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I, I got it, and I got to keep doing this because I and I got to come up with some graphics because I think that for the public it'll be important to find something graphical that cuts through that and makes it make sense. And most people that aren't looking at the the operating budget will have less interest in that 335. The other trick though is that 140 that we're paying on center. That's the debt service on the Center School edition from 1999. We've only got three years left of that. So I'm only talking about the first two years, but in the third year, you make your last payment, and that'll save you another five cents per thousand after that, because that'll go away. Yeah. And we'll reduce the budget by that 140. So bar graphs would be but nice. If, bar you look, graphs like that. if you're looking at the, you know, education is an ongoing investment. Yes. Right? So, so you're, you're, uh, we're investing more than 32 cents. You know, because we've got 335 and 460. That's right. It's a 62, it's roughly 62 cents per thousand for the whole annual payment. Okay. okay. That you'll pay thereafter. Because the 17 tax on to the to the 32, tax on to the another 12 cents for that Marston piece. So it's 62 okay. cents is the is the real the real cost moving 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 long term. It's just that you're already paying 12 of it today. So. Mm. Sandy. Um, I don't want to keep belaboring this, but I'm, and I don't know if you mentioned this or not, but how long to complete the entire project? We're talking about a 
20, 24, 26 month cycle. So they will, they will essentially break, they would like to break ground in the first summer. This will be next summer of 16. Right. They'll start with demolition and then site work to create external or additional egress and temporary walls so they can seal off what's left of the building for the seventh and eighth graders that'll be there, assuming that we don't bring sixth graders over, they stay at Marston. So we'll have two grades worth, not three. They'll do the demo and then spend the entire school year building that piece across the back, which will include the gymnasium, that that uh, first and second floor labs and, and core classrooms and the, the uh, music area chorus and band out back with art on top of it. They'll build all of that. Then in the second summer, they'll get inside and spend the summer ripping through the kitchen and making renovations there because they need to turn that back over for school to start in the fall. And then in that second school year, they'll break the building down and they'll do first the newer addition, the, 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 the two-story addition to where the classrooms are. They'll renovate in that space. That's their plan right now first. And then in the second half of the year, from February through the summer, they'll go into the auditorium space and the new and the existing uh, administrative suites and those classrooms that are connected, and they'll finish that renovation. And it'll be ready for... Uh, it'll be complete as we walk in the door for school in the fall of 18. Cindy, one of your sheets, too, the one with the orange, will outline all of the stages, too. Thank Some you. Some people ask us about portables instead of keeping the kids at the individual schools, but I have not been a fan of portables. Mm -hmm. One, it's an additional ex expense. Mm -hmm. Two, once you get them, you can't get rid of them, mm -hmm. and you can't sell them because nobody wants them. At least my colleagues have all, you know, they don't want them. And then the other problem is here at the beach, you know, you have a lot of humidity, so you're always running air conditioning in them year-round because you worry about mold and mildew in those those closed-up quarters. So I've not been, I did not recommend that to the school board as a solution to this no, children. Oh, you be right, and all the shoveling those and cleaning. Those are when I was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 not good. Yeah. So I think yeah. this is a good solution. I think we can we'll work that out and, uh, yeah. instead of uh, all right, final wrap-up of questions. Sonny had his hand up. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I totally agree you need a new academy, all right? But you see why I, you, you're going through hoops to build a why it's still trying to run a school. I still think it makes a lot more sense to build a brand new school. I have a question on, on another subject, though. L.A. closed their schools because somebody said there was going to be a bombing. The SAU 90 have emergency program set up? We, we, um, that's a great question, and um, it's one that we are very sensitive about. Three years ago, we had um, our Navy SEALs come in, Organs come in. They did a three-day uh, audit of our buildings. They went through our buildings, spent time with our staff in every nook and cranny, spent time with the Hampton PD and the fire department and the EMTs. We got a wonderful report with 25 recommendations, which we've been incorporating into the budget. Okay, around safety of our buildings. We run all kinds of drills. The most, the, the latest drill that we're running, we do lockdown evacuations. So we are working with our teachers to be prepared, and our administrators, to be prepared for any circumstance. So teachers are making decisions when, when the principal calls for a lockdown, teachers are now making decisions about what they should do with their class. Do I stay in place? based on where that person might be, or do I, do I evacuate? And our teachers are doing that. We also have locations. So for instance, when uh, Hampton Academy does a, some teacher decides to evacuate the building, they have a destination. They know where they're going. They have a place where the kids will go um, should they be in that situation. So we're con that's a great question. We're constantly doing that um, preparation for our students, both lockdowns and evacuations. And by the way, our police are always involved in it. Yeah, you have a way to contact all the parents through the internet. Yeah, we do. You know, we use Blackboard Connect, <clears throat> which allows us um, text right. mail as well as phone calls to all of our families yeah. with about a 95, so 96 yeah. percent You're not going to throw 690,000 kids out in the street. Yeah. Then, right. Yeah. right. Not tomorrow. But, you know, we, um, we know that the circumstances will be what they are, and homes around us or local um, facilities 
And I don't want to get into a lot of detail, as you know, because I'm protecting that. that don't, don't scare us, please. But don't. <laughs> please understand that I think our, our, our staff, our leaders, our principals, and our children are prepared. That's a good note to end on, Sonny. While our, our By the way, that was a hoax, Sonny. Today, well, our teachers and our staff have prepared. This building Excuse was not me. built for domestic terrorism when it was built. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that as a facility going forward, being rebuilt, a lot of those considerations will be taken into consideration, right. especially when I heard you talk about the parking, taking it away from the building. And I'm sure there's a whole list, which is, again, one more reason why what we have does not meet the 21st really, century standards. The really nice thing is that most of what you really want to have happen, you won't really notice is there. but. It's included and incorporated in the design, and it lends mm -hmm. itself to a heightened level of security without it being a gun turret or something, exactly. or, or, or a tower out front. You know, it's <laughs> just the design. The design intends to drive to drive itself toward greater security and and limited access. Mm -hmm. And another question. Which is my last question, I guess. Thank you. Um, better loan state money. Somebody's there getting anything? Well, I don't know I, you know, obviously, there is no uh, federal money for infrastructure. Um, the state money, as you know, is still um, um, has a moratorium on it. It is, mm -hmm. you know, it's very frustrating, and I um, I share my frustrations with uh, with the folks in at the state level. I feel very strongly about this. That the, the community of Hampton pays a lot of money in room and meal taxes. You also have a vibrant um, seashore that brings in a lot of funds to the state. And yet, in terms of uh, Hampton School District, for adequacy money, we get zero. And the only money we're getting for the building is paying off the tail, which is the mortgage, if you will, for Center and Marston. It's very frustrating. We did, um, Nathan and I are applying for money with the state anyway. We um, decided that we would step out of the, what was expected. Out of the box. At, there you go. And we file, we're filing an application. Um, and the reason we're doing that is we understand that our legislator is also looking to do uh, another bill to see if he can't get some money. We want to be first in line. Um, so uh, we're applying any any strategies we can. But right now, Brian, it's it's zero. Yeah, if nothing it's else. the answer I was expecting. If nothing else. Thank you. Just, there continues to be an effort at the legislature to try to preserve the right, maybe, to look retroactively at some funding. We were at $50 million with the old the old projects. We're down closer to $30 million, maybe even under $30 million mm -hmm. moving into next year. If the funding went back to fifty million, there's twenty plus million dollars that could be delegated or designated to a program, whatever that building aid program might be. So we want to stay in line for that for sure and be in the mix. We will chase some small dollars compared to twenty five million. Uh, on the technology side, E rate has opened up some more infrastructure dollars. E rate schools and libraries uh, drives dollars uh, through used to be through telecom, but now it's not just telecommunications. Now they're broadening it to broadband and infrastructure to carry that through your internal wiring and uh, internal networking and such. So we're chasing that to see if any of the dollars we spend in in technology infrastructure can come back at roughly 40 or 50 percent reimbursement through E-rate. That's a, a little bit. The, the federal government just passed the new ESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act, replacing No Child Left Behind. In that grant is money for technology, That's which what we used to have. To. Okay, um, they brought that back. So um, Greg and I, Greg's, Greg's already on it, and we're looking at what what we might be able to acquire from the feds through the grant process, um, like we do Title One and Title Two and Title Three, um, so that we can acquire some of that funding to help with our technology funds. But we do look for every every dollar we can find. We've been fortunate with our grants and some of the smaller grants that we've gotten, but nothing of sub substance. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for coming in. Great budget. It was awesome. very informative. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Yours. I'm going to take a 10 minute break here, kids. 10 minutes, rest. 10 minutes. 10 minutes, but a real 10 minutes, not a 20 minute, 10 minutes. Thanks to all our visitors, too. Appreciate Thank you. It. Yeah, thank you, Paul. No, we, don't, we don't get a lot here, so. <laughs>
I got it. I got it. Okay. You know, not Welcome back, time. everybody. Okay. Thanks, guys. Jerry. Um, we're back from break. Thank you very much. The second part of this evening was going to be to review MIS. That was supposed to be last week, but we oh, yeah. had DPW yeah. and we ran over, remember, and I said we'd go over it this week. Yeah. However, the town manager and Christy are not with us. So we need them to go over MIS. Yeah. So now we're going to have to move that forward one more time. It pleases the committee. Well, who's running the MIS department anyway? Christy. Christy is running. It's under Christy. Right. Yeah, so that's why we're going to have to move it forward one more time. And um, I apologize for that. Now, tonight is the last meeting for, um, for the year, January. Right? Yeah, the last meeting of this year. Mm -hmm. And um, then we have a little hectic week in January, Ooh. namely the 5th, the 7th, and the 8th. Whew. Now, that could have been done two ways. We could have had a break. Uh, we could have had a meeting over Christmas, although this meeting room is, is pretty much booked. Yeah. And the dates that were available, like the 23rd, we wouldn't have liked. No, I would expect almost no one to be here on that night. So that's why it got compacted into the 5th, the 7th, and the 8th. And now I'm going to go a little bit further. Those are going to be packed meetings. Okay. So what do you, uh, uh, Eileen, on the 5th and the 7th and the 8th, what do you hope to accomplish? Okay, on the 5th, the 7th, and the 8th, we're going to have to wrap up MIS. Right. Oh, we got to do that on the fifth, yeah. right? And on yeah. the fifth. So let's, well, let me put on the fifth. Note. We'll do MIS. MIS. Okay. We'll start out with that, so that we're complete. What about the municipal insurances? Are we well, um, that was the second thing we haven't heard on the municipal insurance. Well, that's kind of open. That's still open. Okay. So let me just put down municipal insurance. Uh, when you when you send the communication, can will you include that with? Christian. This will all be revised, so okay. you know, I'll send it. I'll send it. I mean, we said this verbally last week. They may not have picked up on it, but it keeps us from being able to review it tonight. Yeah. So we'll put it on the third. I mean, it's only yeah. you can do it in about twenty minutes, can't you? On the fifth, you mean? On the the fifth? MIS budget. Um, the IT subcommittee has a few talking points prepared. Um, None that I think will take more than 15 or 20 minutes. I mean, that doesn't include okay. everybody else. I have seven or eight or nine questions. Yeah. Then the other thing I would like to do is I would like to have those three meetings start at 6 o'clock mm -hmm. so that that week we can start to finalize everything. We, we can finalize everything. So what? Uh, when would you start the warrant articles, if you will? I'm going to start the warrant articles. Usually we do the review first. Oh, yeah. The budget okay. review, you mean? But yeah. this year we're not going to. Okay. Because I think how you look at the Warren articles, because there's so much money baked into the Warren articles, will be how you may look at the budget itself. Okay. So, so I think let's get the Warren articles out of the way. Okay. Where, Although you should be working on the budget now. Oh, yeah. You right, should be going line by line by line by line by line and coming up individually with what you think is you know okay so that Tuesday on the 5th we'll be doing MIS the insurance municipal insurance and we're going to start the war and I'm going to start the war and we're going as far as we can with them and then on Thursday the 7th finish the war articles if we can in two well, hopefully we'll be able to. Yeah, don't realize how many there are. Probably be about forty of them. Uh, we only have twenty-three. I, don't, 23, I right? don't know that there'll be forty money articles, though, Mike. And a lot of them, um, like the forfeiture funds and that, that are there every year. They wrote probably how, ten of those more articles. How many we received officially so far? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. And though some of those may be changed and taken out before they we, we get a final packet. So I don't think you'll, you may not be looking at 40, but even at that, there's 10 every year that. So we should be able to get them done in two We should nights. be able to get them done. <coughs> As usual, the there will probably be 10 that we'll be debating about. Mm -hmm. So you'll have them. You've had them already. You know your questions. Yeah. You can, if you have questions about them during this stretch, of the next two weeks, you can certainly submit the questions to me, all right, and I'll, I'll send them off to get answers for us, and maybe that will shorten 
that down. Otherwise, they're not. They don't plan on being here. I mean, would would uh, the department heads be here to to defend their warrant articles? They can come. They can defend it when we do the public hearing. But no, when we when we go over the budget itself, no. But I'm sorry for the warrant articles. Yes, they will. They yeah. will be here. Yeah. You know. So we'll, they'll have to know which ones we're addressing on which night. Whether the, the on the. On, on the That's different true. several. And which once one? I have the final packet, I okay. will align them. Okay. After this many years, I know which ones we see all the time. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll align them so that we can get rid of quite a few of them. We still have a little bit of time if we needed one more date to go over these. But maybe putting it's an intense week, but maybe that's just the way it has to be. Yeah. And we'll all be tuned in, so get your rest through the holiday season. And what is the deadline for the petition warrant articles? 10th, I think. Jan January. It would be in the following I week. Think it's the 12th. So we're not going to have right. petition yeah. warrant articles. It's the 12th. Yeah. Okay. Well, so we're going to end up with, we're not going to finish the, the warrant articles. The deadline to submit them. You'll, you'll finish them. Trust well, me. Well, no, no, no. I'm just saying there might be someone coming in at the last minute. Yeah. Right. Up till the 12th. So there might be a couple, a handful that we'll still have to the address. The ones you see at the end being thrown in there, by now the town should have its warrant articles together. The ones you see that will come in in the last minute are usually private petition exactly. articles. Exactly. They, they don't, don't take long. Them. Usually not. Right. Well, they don't we'll take see. long. And for those of you who are frightened. the case, could we, at the public hearing, could we make that the first order of business if there is any additional? Could. Yeah, no we choice, did, right? we've we did done that. something like we've that before. That Sorry, just to, as a contingency, if we, need be. We have I done that before. Yeah. Some right. of you who haven't been here before, there's a little bit of fear based on, oh, we've got so many warrant articles. Believe it or not, we had at least one oh, year. We had ago a ton of them, and we got we through them all more. in one night. Yeah. yeah, and we did them all in one night. Right. Yeah, but we have a different problem this year. So, the point I'm trying to make is some of those warrant articles want to take out the under. Right. They understand right. fund balance, and right now we still don't. we haven't had the details. They've told us what the total is, but not the details of that. Understand we'll have fund it by balance. then. We'll have it by then. I'm but sure. But we should have it when we get the uh, cop official copies of the audit. Oh, well, how many pages did that draft audit? Is that what you're talking about? <coughs> Mike? One minute. I don't know how many pages, but she got a pile of it today, right, from Mary Louise. As I get information, I'll disseminate it to you. We'll have it by um, then. Here's the thing. And everybody has their own vote and will decide in their own way. The best instructions I can give you is my rule of thumb I've used through the years. All right. If you have information to make a reliable judgment on how you're going to vote, then you make it. If you don't have enough information, then you're, you've got to be your own guide for that. In the past, I've turned down... Um, or, and, or chosen not to support things because there was no information. One year with the senior center, we heard about it the very last night. It wasn't that we were in, we were against a senior center, but you can't come in in the 11th hour and 59th minute and say we'd like money to go rent the space and we don't know any details. I'm glad we didn't do that. And in conscience, I would have loved to have seen a senior center. But based on the details and spending taxpayer money, I had to vote no. So you may be in the same situation this year where you didn't get the information that we've been asking for from the beginning. I will tell you we still do not have the default budget. Right. Nor has the Board of Selectmen passed a default budget that I know of. I don't I I didn't no. get to watch last night, but I don't think they passed. They didn't. And I don't did Phil Bean Ask for the a warrant uh, for he the default. He asked to borrow a few things, but um, not the they did not no, do they anything last night. Right. We've asked for that publicly at every meeting for the last half a dozen meetings. It will come. I have no idea when. So, Terrible. this is. I mean, look at the school. That was right into all the documents on every page. I know. Yeah. It won't take. It shouldn't take us too long to finalize the school's budget. It seems to me. Oh, the school budget was. Nicely. We could have done. passed it tonight, as far as this is concerned. Mm -hmm. Well, the, so the final review will be doing on the eighth, the Friday. The Friday, unless we get to start it on Thursday. I wholly suspect mm -hmm. if we start those meetings at six o'clock, we will be in the review of the budget. Now, don't remember, we are not going to come in and, and we're not going to sit in here for review, and do line by line. You know. Well, we've already talked everything to death. 
We're going to do lines, right. all right? We already Not the sublines. Yeah, we did. Really We've clubbed it to death. Right. You've had carte blanche to ask your questions. Mm -hmm. From what I can see, the questions that were asked and were submitted were answered by the department yep. heads, and we'll thank them for that. They did, and I think they did a pretty good job of answering most of them. I think so, All right? Too. At this point, if you go back and research, send it to me, <coughs> be aware that I'd probably be active on sending it to me this week, knowing people take their vacation times at this time of the year. I wouldn't doubt that some of the department heads wouldn't be doing the same between Christmas and New Year's, so we've got to give them a little bit of running room. So the January meetings will be start at 6 o'clock? Um, uh, yeah, if that's okay with everybody you here. Need to, you need to finalize that with the with the crew yeah, of Channel 22 and then kind of get back to us and email us. The one thing that I spoke to Bill prior to this meeting starting was that he has no crew for Friday that Friday night. He has no crew for he that Friday no night. He has no crew. Nobody has signed up. Um, so you, you're going to have to kind of finalize that with him as well. Then maybe I can work with the schools. Yeah. We have a guy that can tape it or whatever. Yeah, it can at least be taped. Uh, rolling stuff, too. Where are we going to do that? Well, Mike and I are, within the next 10 days, we're going to be at the DBW site. All right. Are you finally got an appointment? Well, uh, no, I've held off on it. He's been asking me to come over. Yeah. Okay. Chris Jacobs has. And I, I wanted to talk with Mike tonight. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a cluster of dates. I'm going to represent that to Chris tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Write an email. Mm -hmm. And um, Chris can look over the dates and choose the most appropriate date for him. We haven't so, got a list of the rolling stock at all. It's in your Nothing. book. It's in the yeah, book, I think. It's in your book. Is it in the back? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's in, in your book because it's okay, thank you. Okay. Um, there is, there has been an open dialogue between the two of you, so yeah. I'll no, leave. I think it's it's been good. I mean, uh, I, I told Chris what we were interested in doing. We're not going to be belaboring anybody over there with budgets and stuff. We're just looking no. at what the warrants are all about, the $2 million bond article, blah, 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 mm -hmm. and uh, the equipment, of course, and so on, and, it's, and, and, and so we can come back and express our sentiment. Mm -hmm. I think Chris did a good job of representing his budget when he was, yeah, he was in here. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, they're always the sacrificial lamb. Yep. Well, they got the biggest uh, budget, right? So that's where the money is. Yeah. Do you anticipate more warrant articles coming in that, that you know, between will, now and our meeting? That will there will be, be more warrant articles that will come in, but like I say, 25% yeah. um, of them will be ones that just end up on the ballot every year. But it, it seems it, like the selectmen have, have, have gotten the ones they they want out of their um, well, they department heads. By now, yeah. And, and we, we've got those 23. What you're going to have yeah. is you're going to have two groups of warrant articles. You're going to have ones from the town, mainly the Board of Selectmen, planning, zoning, whatever. And then you'll have private petition warrant articles. The private petition warrant articles is from the residents, and they're usually two or three liners. Yeah. Well, we, don't, we don't pass upon those, do we? Yeah. Not unless they involve money. Any, right. Anything uh, that has a dollar article. sign in it, right. we, we... If there's a dollar uh, sign, we do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but even though there may be, you know, 50 warrant articles, not all of them will have money in them, right. and not all of them will take really deliberation, because those warrant articles have been here before, and we just pass them through. That matrix that I forwarded mm -hmm. to you, could you forward it to the... I didn't share it with anybody else, but I mean, that, that's the one that divides it up and says, here's the 23 articles, Believe he's coming... I did, did yeah, I, I, I did send it, it out. From her. Really? Oh, well, I have it too. Okay, I didn't. I'm I, on okay. the ball with some things. No, no, I just... <laughs> you know, I'm one of those... I, I, I don't know what happened to it. Maybe you used to want to get yelled maybe at. because I did it. It didn't come to me. I don't know. <laughs> I used to want to get yelled at. I know what you're up to. <laughs> it might be. I might have just sent it to everybody else and yeah. I didn't send it back to you. But if you have any correspondence, don't clog up town hall. Send it to me. Yep. Okay? And I'll direct it and try to keep track of the answers coming back. Yeah, you don't want to sneak around town hall. That's the message uh, I got. Michael, thank you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, well, we need to have any purchase orders that were placed in November and December. Okay. Because I don't want to see a doubling up in the operating budget, and they're asking, and they've already bought it in November and December. Okay. Last year, I can remember a couple of items that that happened on. Well, what happens is we've recommended that if they had money left at the end of the year, that some of the things that were on the budget for next year be paid out of this year so they have them and they don't have to wait till March. Right. Well, I mean, some of that is genuinely good intentions. And yeah. 
If I keep them waiting, you need it. Get I don't it. have a problem with that, but yeah. don't double up on me in the upper. Well, budget. exactly. You know, the thought being you're right, Jerry. If you're buying it now out of the 2015 budget, there's no need to look at it in the 2016 budget. Right, and that'll be an adjustment. It will be an adjustment. And we need to know if, in fact, the town is going to readjust its fuel costs. You can't guess. Okay, I mean, I heard something about credit cards and buy at the pump and blah, 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 but I, are they going to come in with an adjusted fuel cost for gasoline, diesel, and diesel? If not, we have to make an adjustment for that. Well, they have given us the gallons per department that they're right. using. They have given us the gallons per department, and which is good. last year we really struggled because when, this oil, when the gas started going down, we had no idea where bottom was going to be. And as we're breaking over the two dollar line, it's a dollar ninety three down in Seabrook. Yeah, well, you, I, buy, I filled up that. I know, but you know, you got to sit here and go, "Come on, this has got to end up soon." Today in but the oil. one thing that we can adjust without playing any mind games on, on where the cost of gases, period, is on the tax. We pay the tax on the gas no matter what if if we're buying it from the state. Well, no, the state price is 264 254 254 And that's supposedly with the taxes taken out. And yeah. right mm -hmm. now, if we buy it for $1.93 at the pump, well, let's say $2, I'm not sure exactly what the tax amount is, but that's the portion. 42 cents. 42 cents. That can that's come state back to and us. federal. So well, actually, we're paying. 20, though, isn't it? Yeah, they're half and half. 42 20. cents. So yeah. now the 42 cents off $1.93. No, no, it's not 42. It's only about half of that for state. But both together. Yeah, but he's, okay. he said both taxes. The state and well, Mike, if you're paying two fifty four through the state right now, yeah, and supposedly you have they, gas at the pump. Let's just say for two, but, you're uh, effectually paying a dollar sixty, right. and you get abated back that yeah. forty two cents I'm tax. I agree. So you're saving a dollar for every gallon you're buying. Just about. And they're working on it. And if you have a hundred thousand, <coughs> if you have a hundred thousand gallons. Okay, they've got a credit card. They're working on it, working and on it. I think that maybe working on that tax portion. Now Not the, guessing what the gallon dollar amount's going to be. I'm working a little bit on that portion. Yeah. Um, diesel at, at Seabrook was two fifteen diesel. a gallon. Two fifteen a gallon. Well, that's yeah. good because we use a lot of diesel. And in this I believe he had something like three thirty five or three thirty eight yeah. in yeah. his. What, see, what we need to do is what the oil, uh, the big oil companies are doing. We need to rent. A, um, a tanker and put it out offshore about 25 miles. <laughs> Fill it up now, okay? <laughs> yeah, right? Sure. Yeah. It's, it's like house hunters again, okay? There's three options. We just threw that one out. We'll put it right behind right, your right, house. Right. Well, I'm just throwing ideas there was, out there. There was, right. there was some time other changes to the budget. <coughs> um, the, there were some other changes to the budget that, uh, where they had to go back and add certain uh, amounts to some line items going to be to as we've been waiting for this insurance okay so when uh, would we anticipate them giving it to an updated budget with the insurance in it we don't know okay well we're looking for that update of course they can't give us those figures until they get them yeah and of course those figures would be changed in the default budget as well as the proposed budget yeah so, yep. and that's the only thing supposedly holding up the default budget, which is why I'm not understanding why we don't have yep. the default budget. We're going to be making changes to a, a budget, and, and uh, apparently this, some of those line items have already changed, and, and I don't have, I haven't caught them all in my budget. You, know. you won't. Okay. Totally again. So what we need from, we have, there has been some changes, so what we actually need um, in addition to the purchase orders, is we need an updated copy right now. Updated of copy everything of everything that has changed because there were a few, a couple of mistakes. Yeah, they, and they should probably give it to it so that the, the changes appear in red or something, so we know where they are. That'd be nice. I mean, if you got a twenty-six page. Yeah, you know, she doesn't have to recopy the whole thing. She can just give us lines that were changed. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> we don't have to make it out of that. Make some additions for an additional mm -hmm. election. Oh, yeah, yeah, well. yeah, yeah election that's right. You caught yeah. that. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now she didn't change her request on the salary. I lost track of that. Salary, I know there was, was a request for a, a little bill. bit over six thousand dollars for two elections. Correct. But then I heard something in the background, and it may only have been background noise, that the state said it's too late to fill that seat. Oh, really? I don't know. I heard no. From my understanding, no. They're still no. trying to fill it. They're trying yes. to fill it as soon as possible. Um, they don't want to wait, again, this is from my understanding, till the March election. 
They're trying to get it done a special in, election. In okay, January. so they were sending so out the a too letter. late referred to the March election. Correct. Not too I think late they're to trying to do a state. primary and a special election in the month of January, from what I understand. Right. They sent the letter I, out last Wednesday, and they were hoping to get a response back. I think they want to get everybody and they were by hoping the to get an answer by then. 23rd of December. Okay, they're so looking we for have candidates. to stay on that because if that's yes. what it costs, that's what it costs, and it automatically yeah. has to. Yeah, it's just a line. Another line needs to be updated in the in the in our form. Mm -hmm. and, and we got conservation. We did quite close on that. I mean, you know, there were three funds. We were. No, we haven't got the answers to that yet. We, had Eileen, the lad, the lad, whatever her, her last. Ellen, name. Ellen, 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 Ellen. Ellen did give me the information, and I will send it out to you. Okay, that's what we need okay. from that. Um, what happens is she sent it to me, and it has account numbers and that, and we don't want to. Oh, yeah. We don't want to. So, I mean, conservation is just so another. Gonna take it and kind of. It's another. You're going to have to trust me to give you. Well, yeah, you're going to have to trust me to give you a synopsis of it, all right? Mm -hmm. And okay. that, and you'll get to ask questions again on the Warren articles. Because there are some things that were going to be requested for specific funds. And so I just want to make sure I'm correct in saying that we do anticipate people being here to defend war and articles if need be. They usually do. And yep. that they will Well, be. I mean, if you're, if I was any uh, police or fire or DPW, I, it would be to my interest. Well, that's what I would. And the yeah. war yeah. articles yeah. is discussed. Where we're splitting up the war articles, I'm trusting you're going to inform which we departments won't really need to be know. Here. You won't Well, know usually they through. come with it. No. Okay. They, okay. I mean, the way it's always been, I mean, I, I don't know if I have to go back and tell everybody, but usually... With the Warren article, they they come in and right. sell it. Oh, yeah. Try to sell yeah, some Warren article. They don't right, and sell it. Then, okay, uh, that we, but we it's not, not a it. long, drawn-out process. Yeah. And what I would tell you is, where all the town Warren articles are concerned, it was discussed through the budgets when they came in for their budgets. So when you get them, go back and look at the presentation. There's no need to come in with duplication of yeah. questions. Mm. I mean, a lot of the things that. You, if you didn't watch the meeting, then you didn't see it. Yeah. So go back and watch the meeting in your time in the next couple of weeks and mm -hmm. um, do it that way mm -hmm. so that there's as few so questions as possible. So we can move along. I mean, some of, the, it's, some of them are not difficult. Some of them have been rolled out. Police and fire pretty much let their cats out of the bag while they yeah. were here. So um, with the schools, you pretty much know what they're going to be asking for. Yeah. They, so. We let them roll out a little bit of that tonight. Speaking, of, speaking of moving on... I, you know, this is your time of the night, Stephen. And tonight, I'm going to say, let it, let it go. All right. First of all, I want to say Merry Christmas to everyone. Thank you. And thank you to Channel 22, the crew that's been so wonderful to us all year long. And I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor. Yay. Let's look at you now. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry, Merry Christmas, everybody. Get some